Hello and welcome back to another diplomacy. Uh, diplomacy? That's a great start. Diplomacy commentary. Uh, you may hear that I'm a little bit more echoey this time. I moved house um, the day before yesterday and haven't properly set up everything yet, but hopefully this will be fixed by next time. Um, I'm also here with Ezio once again, as always. Hi, Ezio. Hello, hello. <laughs> Enjoying this thing with me. We're in this together. Um, the enjoying is a is a word that could be used to describe the way that I'm feeling. However, it is likely not accurate. <laughs> I said enduring, which I think is and more enduring, accurate. Enduring. <laughs> that that my friend is an accurate phrase. There you go. Yeah. Um. But some <laughs> amazing things accent. have come out of this. We were so focused on this uh, French fleet that went to Syria and then went all the way back up to Yorkshire now. Uh, and we've been talking about it all of last episode, if you were listening to that. Well, one of our viewers, um, I apologize if I butcher your name, Andre Engels, uh, put together, like, well, tracked where all the units had been and, and posted a comment on the last video um, talking about some interesting ones. I strongly advise you go give that a like and, and check it out. It's very interesting, but I'll focus on one thing, which is that we completely missed this fleet here, the fleet in Clyde. Turns out that's the interesting one. It's been to Barents Sea and to the Eastern Mediterranean. <laughs> and then back to Norwegian. Which is insane. It's like, yeah. does that happen in any game ever? <laughs> uh, Has that fleet ordered... I, I really need to go back and actually look at that fleet. Has that fleet held or supported anything at any point this game? Or has it just been moving back and forth? I think it, because... it must have stopped at some point. He said it, it moved like 31 times or something, which is still an insanely high amount for a game that's only gone for 40 years. Uh, only gone yeah. for 40 years. Um, only. <laughs> but yes, uh, that's just ridiculous. In fact, I think he posted the full movement path of the unit. Like, Ezio, do you want to read that out? <laughs> Oh, uh, absolutely. I would love to read that out. It was fantastic to read out loud the first time. The full path of this unit in Clyde. Brest to English Channel, to Irish Sea, to North Atlantic, to Norwegian Sea, to Barents Sea, back to Norwegian Sea, back to Barents Sea, back to Norwegian Sea, North Atlantic Ocean, Mid Atlantic Ocean, Western Med, Tyrrhenian Sea, Naples, Ionian Sea, Eastern Med, Ionian Sea, Tyrrhenian Sea, Gulf of Leon, Piedmont, Gulf of Leon, Western Med, Spain South Coast, Mid Atlantic, North Atlantic, Liverpool, Wales, London, North Sea, Edinburgh, Norwegian Sea, back to Norwegian Sea, North Atlantic, Clyde. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that has been on a long trek, um, and I think it's only been in one. No, it's been in like three supply centers in that time, right? It went to Naples, London, and Edinburgh, but uh, still serious. Yeah, commitment. I mean, it started in Brest. Does that count? I think that. Counts. Okay, that probably counts. So four supply centers then. Oh, and Spain. Okay, five. <laughs> but yes, yeah. that's a lot of moves. Um, but it's amazing. Yeah, as I said, thank you very much for, for putting together that data, uh, Andre, and for all the other facts you gave us. I'm going to let viewers go to the comments and find those out for themselves. Um, and we'll get on with commentating this game now. When we left off, the French player had just started being ganged up on by absolutely everyone, and we mean everyone. Maybe not the Turk. Um... But outside of that, the Austrian is in Marseille, the Italian is getting ready to take Iberia, uh, the German and the Russian have united against France in the north. It's not looking great for them if this alliance structure holds. Uh, shall we go ahead and move into spring 1941, see what happens here? Let's see him. All right. Spring 1941. Anything that stands out to you? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Not I think this is um, about what you'd expect to see. Oh, okay, I take it back. Helgoland to Denmark is a little odd. I would have expected to see Helgoland support Kiel to Holland if they were planning on continuing to pressure the French. This Denmark to Sweden is a little bit, a little bit suboptimal for that. Yep, uh, and I mean Denmark to Sweden in general could be considered hostile to Russia, 
We don't know whether it was just a defensive move or not. Um, but in combination with this shuffle, it seems a little bit uh, aggressive. The... Yeah, but just like a little bit, right? I just saying, hey, I might, I might need to go to war with you in the future, and this, this army in Sweden is going to be important. <laughs> yep. So the other thing that like stands out to me here is probably Vienna to uh, Galicia. Something I didn't mention just then is what happened in the last episode is Russia and Italy and Turkey, everyone was sort of being friendly with Austria and support holding him. No one wanted him to go to war with them. And the Austrian was kind of just sitting there and letting that happen, just staying on five. Um, but clearly he's not happy with that anymore. He is going aggressively against the Russian. Could be in combination with the German orders up there. Yeah, it's a little odd. Um, this has put Bulgaria at risk um, with Greece leaving. Greece to Ionian, you would need... Austria would need Greece to support hold Bulgaria, to hold Bulgaria against the three Russian units in Romania, Black Sea, and Constantinople. But Greece moved to Ionian, so now Russia could take Bulgaria um, probably, very probably, next turn, because it's a guess about... Um, so Austria can try to defend Romania by supporting it with Serbia, right? Level 1. Then Russia attacks it with strength 3, and then they take it. That's the simplest solution. So then yep. Austria says, okay, I can also use Budapest to cut Romania. So then that would say, unless Romania is the one doing the attacking, then Romania doesn't get taken. Or then Bulgaria doesn't get taken. So then Russia gets, has two options. Either Romania cuts Serbia, or they attack into Bulgaria from Romania. Um, if Russia attacks into Bulgaria from Romania with strength 3, then Austria can support it through Romania from Bulgaria with strength 3, and then just make it a little bit messy. Yep. Uh, it's a, a little, little bit, I mean a lot. A little bit of a guessing game there, especially with an open Warsaw as well. Um, yes. Ukraine can't necessarily be used on this front here, uh, unless he wants to take the gamble up there. Um... I, I haven't spotted Greece to Ionian. That's an interesting move, because the Turk has been sitting there in Greece for, what, the past 20 years? Um, for a long time. It's certainly been a while, and has never taken the opportunity to leave before. And they can't even build. They can't right? build. Nope. Um, I thought Greece was the best place for the Turk. I feel like if they can get a stronghold in Tunis, it's better. Uh, it's just more secure. As in, less likely to just be kicked out of by someone wanting a dot. Um, Maybe. But, the but worry is why that didn't they do it early? Dot, Italy just takes it, right? I yeah. think the nice thing about Greece is that Austria needs to use the units in Serbia and Bulgaria to hold against the Russian. And you can help him hold against the Russian, and he can't afford to kick you out and kill you. Whereas, Italy is probably going to find time to free up two fleets to then kick you out of Ionian and take Tunis. Mm, especially considering so, there's there's a build coming up here with Marseille, probably. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if Turkey takes Tunis, then oh. Italy won't be building. Yeah. But Italy can also move Gulf of Lyon into Tyrrhenian and Apulia into Ionian and then have two on Tunis anyways. Right. Yep. So it's a little... It's a li I, I thought Turkey was optimally placed in Greece and should have stayed there forever. P perhaps move into Aegean. I could see that being reasonable. Um, but that is just a little riskier. But it gives you a better chance to get your home centers back. But... Yeah. Whatever. I, like, think, I think Greece was the best place. Greece is certainly better positioned to take home centers back, which is something Turkey has to do eventually if they want to survive this game. Um... I mean, they could potentially survive it on one supply center, but it's not not, not, in this one. <laughs> not particularly not a, likely not here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, right, so the the move to Ionium must be irritating for the Italian, though. He's just managed to get his units on the uh, on the French front. Although, if as long as the Austrian is working with him, the Austrian can just support hold Marseille here. Question is, was that support hold on Marseille from France agreed or not? <laughs> was that just him attempting to to get the Austrians to stay there? Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure what exactly 
Austria was hoping with that support hold. Possibly he knew he was going to get bounced, and so he just wanted to to do it anyways. Mm -hmm. But who knows? If he supports Gascony to Marseille, then oof. It feels mm -hmm. bad to be the Italian, but I think that's unlikely. Mm. Yep, and up in the north, basically nothing happens, uh, apart yeah, from this German reshuffle. From, yeah, some good tactics from France here to keep keep himself alive. Clyde bouncing North Atlantic Ocean means that just nothing happens. Yep. Good guess. Very good guess on that front. Um, yeah. Nothing much else to talk about this phase. There's a lot of holding. Uh, Germany just slowly getting into position to force Burgundy down here. Um, so, shall we move ahead to the fall? See what happened there? Let's, let's see some more moves. Alright. Okay, so first things first, it looks like the move to Sweden, Denmark, Heligoland was not anti-Russian in the slightest, because they, they just held there. Um, well, Berlin moved to Silesia, so I don't know if we can say oh, not anti-Russian in the slightest, hmm. but probably not, right? probably not that bad. It's like, yeah. That's interesting. Was Berlin moving to Silesia to help the uh, Austrian against the Russian, or to help the Russian against the Austrian? This is the question. I suppose the great thing about this is you don't have to decide until next turn. <laughs> you can just pretend that it's whoever's uh, unit, you know, the, that it's the unit for either of them, and keep them both on site for the moment. Um, and Austria went for the very... The, yeah, Austria lost Bulgaria. Yeah. And then, notably, did not retreat into Greece. Austria chose to take Bulgaria off the board and let the Turks stay alive, now that Turkey is back in Aegean. Okay? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Um, I mean, it does make sense. The, uh, the In order to pressure the Russian in Turkey, you need the fleets rather than the armies, but that fleet's going to have to go back to Greece now anyway, right? Maybe. Probably. Probably it's going back to Greece. I think that's likely, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but even so, you just rather, in this position, I think you'd rather have a fleet in Greece than an army, because the fleet in Greece can eventually go back to Aegean, whereas the army in Greece can't. And it can still support attacking to Bulgaria anyways. It's just, Austria is probably quite sad that they didn't go after Romania here. Yeah, I mean... Good guessing on the Russian part, leaving Warsaw open, that ended up being correct, holding Ukraine where it was, not trying to funnel it out. The Austrian tried to guess on Ukraine moving somewhere and getting in behind them, which would yeah, have given an amazing position. Back to Warsaw, absolutely. I really do like this convoy from Sev into Bulgaria. I think if you're trying to take Bulgaria, this is the best way to do it, because now even if Romania was captured, it would have instead been able to retreat into Sevastopol rather than um, getting popped. Yep, that makes sense. And this guarantees, 100% uh, guarantees that you take Bulgaria, right? Because you're cussing yep. the only unit that can support holders. Um, so even if you do lose Romania, you're not losing a unit, you're not, you, you know, you're staying even on supply centers and you've got a slightly better position. Um, <laughs> so, interesting things on the other side of the board. The most interesting move, maybe, in, of all of this turn is I think Spain support Burgundy to wait did Spain support Burgundy to Marseille there? Um, Spain did but it got um, disrupted because Gulf of Leon cut Spain that should and oh Gascony I think misordered Gascony misordered Gascony supported the wrong way um, yeah. otherwise this would have gone and would have knocked the Italian out of Marseille so the Austrian not so friendly towards Italy on this front. Um, <laughs> yeah, and Italy in the meantime didn't tap Trieste, didn't mess with it at all, supported Austria back into Trieste. Yeah. You know, we expected a self bounce. You'd think so. Um, I, I mean, in the case of a self bounce, this is to try and prevent the Austrian building a fleet, I'd assume, right? Um, so, clearly, some at least minor antagonism between the two players. <laughs> But, uh, and yeah, that minor antagonism is manifesting itself on the Western Front, where Austria is sitting in this French center supporting the French against the, the Italian who's chasing the Austrian unit further into Iberia. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. Yep. 
And uh, let's quickly look at the north here. We've got another miss guess from the Russian going into Clyde. Um, obviously the, the French could protect against a whole bunch of different things here, correctly predicted, um, that the Russian would go to one of North Atlantic or Clyde. Uh, and he does end up losing some ground on the Burgundy fronts. <laughs> that... Yeah, and the bad news for France is France is down one anyways, because they lost Spain. Yep. So, they don't really have the units to spare in the north, so I think they're going to have to get rid of Gascony or something, and then they're just going <laughs> to just, just crumble, I think. It's pretty rough. Can you really Actually, afford to take disband an army? No. I I think here you're well. I think you do disband an army, but I think you should disband Picardy, and I think you sh your play should be try to get into Western Med and Mid Atlantic Ocean and just retake Iberia and hope to hold the line down south again. Yep, that um, is the strongest position. Um, yeah, I think that should be his play. Yeah, that Gascony miss order really costs France here. The uh... bigly. <laughs> um. And Italy does manage to pick up a build from Marseille because the Turk goes to Aegean instead of Tunis. Um, yep. Which does lead us to question why did he go to Ionia in the first place, but maybe he just was going to make a run for it and then changed his mind. Yeah, maybe he was going to go to Tunis and then Austria was like, look, I'm a lose Bulgaria, and if you're in Tunis, I'll retreat to Greece, and then you're at the same spot and you're probably going to die, but if you don't, I'll let you keep Greece, where you probably don't die. That makes sense. Um, although, like, if Turkey does take Tunis, they don't have to worry about that retreat. <laughs> you would have expected no, Ionian but... to go to Greece here, right? Uh, I mean, look, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Uh, yes. <laughs> You're very right. <laughs> but Aegean's a prettier place, right? Fleets like being in the ocean, not on land, right? Every time you have a fleet on a coastal territory, it feels pretty bad, usually. This is true. Unless Look at that England. fleet in Venice. <laughs> that fleet in Venice? Yeah. That fleet is not where you want a fleet to be. Makes me cry every time. Um, well, you're crying each phase, right? <laughs> I wonder if... Uh... It... Sorry, go on. As it just sits there and supports Austria units into <laughs> Trieste. Yep. Uh... I wonder if the Turk is just tired of playing at this point, because he's been sitting in Greece for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but he does seem still spirited to do something. Maybe he's just like, I, I mean, really want to take a home since then. Has once the entire game? Not as far as I know. Um, he may have done, but if he has, it's certainly not as much as powers like France have, uh, or Germany. Right? And like, that takes some dedication, man. 40 years in-game is a long time in real life. Yep. Uh, each phase is two days, and a year can take up to five phases, right? With the, uh... <laughs> so that's ten days a year. Um... <laughs> that's a long time. It's a very long time. But yes, Yeah, um, maximum length. Yeah. <laughs> maximum <laughs> length a lot. <laughs> 400 real life days, right? Ouch. That's just over and a year at this, this point. Is, because this is a tournament, right? People are usually not readying up. So, uh, yeah. Yep. All right. Okay, shall so, we... So, end of the day, Russia's building one, Italy's building one, right? France is taking one off. Austria already took off Bulgaria. So, those are the adjudications, right? Adjustments, I should yep. say. Yep, that seems right. correct. Let's go ahead so and... So, it's probably going to be Army Warsaw and... Naples. That Maybe would army make realm. sense. Um, another army for Italy would be interesting, but I feel like he's kind of committed to a fleet-based approach, at least for the moment. Um, especially, I like the, fleet. Although, like, if he builds Army Rome, he can shuffle Fleet Venice out, which I think would be far better than building Fleet Naples here. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, like, it's something where you don't... You want to make sure the German knows that you can't actually hurt him. Mm. Right, so... And possibly, Whatever. like, the Austrian as well, because what are you going to do with the fleet once it's in Trieste? <laughs> Ooh, you're going to stare threateningly at Serbia and Vienna and Budapest. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead to winter 1941. You called 
Army Warsaw, you called, well, you earlier called uh, Army Gascony being disbanded. I think you said that Picardy should be disbanded, but... Yeah, I changed my mind about what France's optimal approach is, but... But yeah, they went whatever. with your first pick, um, and you were right about Fleet Naples here. This is, uh... yeah, these are all pretty straightforward builds, right? Nothing, yeah. nothing too crazy. I would have liked to see that army roam, but Fleet Naples is definitely understandable. Uh, let's... All right. right, we're not doing power rankings this year, the next year, so let's go ahead to Spring 1942. And Russia is immediately losing progress here. I, I love how the, the German army, you know, came down to Cilicia. Am I going to help Russia? Am I going to help Austria? How about I do neither? I'm just going to stand yeah. here and watch. I mean, it's a pretty fight. Yep. This yeah, is true. But, I mean, Russia just didn't get maximally punished, but got pretty punished. I think maximum punish would have been Budapest support holds Serbia, Serbia supports Galicia to Romania, Vienna to Galicia. I think that that crushes this move set the hardest. But Austria's move set is still pretty good. Actually, no, it's not. I take it all back. So here the issue for Austria is that Serbia is now empty and Bulgaria can tap Serbia. And the only way to stop that is by using either Budapest or Romania. And if you do that, then they can't. You can't then support hold Romania, or you can't have Budapest support hold Romania. I think you need to tap Serbia from Romania. Well, Budapest supports Galicia into Romania. Is the order set you need to do as Austria? That makes sense. You have to ask the uh, Turk to tap Bulgaria as well. Um, but it yes. still doesn't save Romania necessarily, right? If uh, Bulgaria yeah. gets supported up by Sevastopol and Ukraine. Yep. Uh, it's awkward, right? Which is why if you had the other support, if you'd done the maximal punish, right, you just still have an army in Serbia, and then everything's golden. Yep, but can't really blame the Austrian for not going for that one, because it is... That's a crazy move set. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy it's to funny. talk about in hindsight, but... I really hope you were doing exactly this move. I think a more reasonable att attempt would have just been something like supporting Galicia into Romania, and I'm not sure how that would have been an interesting fight if you had Budapest support Galicia to Romania, Serbia supports that as well, because then you have to retreat out of Serbia, but you're in Romania and Galicia and Budapest. You probably retreated to Trieste, mm. and then it probably goes back to neutral anyways. I think that's the more expected moveset. Probably. Whatever. We do uh, see the Italian going into Aegean, taking the place of that Turkish unit, bringing Naples down, no presumably, presumably to go to Eastern Mediterranean. And yes, the Turkish unit is now back in Greece again. Um, <laughs> Just move to Ionia, move to Aegean. Wait a minute, I think Greece is where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Let's go into Greece. To be fair, even the best holiday in Greece uh, probably gets a little dull after 20 years. <laughs> I mean, people just, like, have made their lives in... Like, there are people who live in Greece, right? Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> They're like, you don't have to be vacationing in Greece. You can just move to Greece. <laughs> They've set up a shop. That's their home. This is true. Look, they, they went on a, uh, like, a little cruise. Because you got to go traveling at some point. Um, yeah, it is pretty, right? They went to see the world, the Ionian, the Aegean, and then back to Greece. There's a bunch of islands over there that are pretty fun to visit, I'd assume. They are, um, but they're inaccessible on this board, so they don't exist. The uh... You're right. So, other things that happened on this board, we've got Spain going up to Gascony, which is an interesting one. Do you think that's the... Given that the Austrian was helping the French prior to this, do you think that's to try and protect the French here, or to try and profit off of his demise? I think he's just going to ask Germany for support into Paris or Brest or something. Hmm. That would make sense. Um, although right. the German has very little reason to give it, I think, especially considering that France took Picardy off the board. Pretty sure France had a Mart. Yeah, that would make sense. Pretty, I'm pretty sure this is an NMR from France. There is no like, way you do not retreat this unit to Brest. You retreat that into Brest, right? You can support Old Paris, and then if Austria supports Old Paris with you, you're just fine, right? Even if Aust if Austria just doesn't support 
an attack into you, you're just fine. So it looks like he input orders for the moves and then didn't get there for retreats. Yep. The witch but is... it's still just a guess, right? Yeah. Is it a guess? Well, because I'm assuming Gascony's going to help out the French. I changed the Okay. Mind. If Gascony does help out the French, then uh, yes, although there is a Russian fleece in the English Channel, which makes it not a guess. Um, well, that Russian fleet's not going to mess around with Brest. What are you talking about? I mean, it might. It's, yeah, uh, it's not. There's it's nothing not. in North Sea, so what else would it do? It could go to Mid Atlantic, uh, I guess. Yeah, it'd be something <laughs> else. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be so rude as to guarantee that his ally gets a center. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. <laughs> if I'm not getting the dot, nobody gets the dot. I mean, that's fair. I don't know that you actually want Germany to grow as as Russia here because what, France is really the. Yeah, France is really the only thing that's keeping the German from completely devastating you. It, you're, you're having to fight the Austrian in the south, the German's got no enemies. Um, yeah, plus the army of Munich could make it into Silesia pretty easily. Like, there's a potential for a pretty devastating stab on the Russian, against the Russian by the German. Because Sweden to Finland, Denmark to Sweden, Helgoland to Denmark, Silesia to Prussia, Munich to Silesia. Yep. And Russia's not building this turn, right? So St. Pete is terror is, is super exposed, and then Norway is scared. So in one year, it's entirely plausible you lose Warsaw, St. Pete, and Norway, and then you're you're popped, right? Yep. You have to go back to well, not back to. I suppose you have to go to being a, a southern Russian power, which isn't a great thing against an Italy with fleets in Aegean and presumably some Med and an Austria uh, trying to push on your flank. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. But France is around, and so if Germany makes those moves, then they lose a bunch of centers to France. So, yep. yeah, Russia's probably actually I, does want France to stay alive for a long time. They want to, France to give them the English centers without giving Germany all of the French ones. It's, the, yep. <laughs> it's a shame it's... that so far Germany has gotten Belgium and Russia's gotten nothing. Yep. Uh, so, anything else to talk about here, or shall we move ahead to the next phase? Uh, let's see what Austria does with Gascony. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. Okay, fall 1942. Well, it did attempt to help out. France didn't take the support, but still manages to guess correctly. Hilariously, Gascony could have even gone back to Spain this turn. <laughs> he could have. Yeah, that probably and that would have been the better move for the Austrian because their move didn't do anything. Hilariously, yeah, I th I don't think you can expect the move to Gascony to have done anything because Marseille can support hold Spain, and I don't think you could assume that it wouldn't do anything to support hold Paris. So I think this is a totally reasonable support hold Paris with Gascony. It's just really funny that <laughs> Germany did. Germany and Italy both did very greedy movesets, and it could have been punished at the same time. Which yep. Which is just unusual. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, All right. I don't see why Italy would want to do this. Why? Like, that's just greedy. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. What's the likelihood that Portugal goes to Mid-Atlantic Ocean? It must be near zero. It's single digits, I'm assuming. Hmm. But uh, hey, you kept them Spain, so it's all right. Yeah, I guess. didn't lose Spain, right? They're fine. Um, <laughs> but also in the south, this Aegean to Con instead of Ionian to Eastern Med also seems super greedy. Yeah. Like it's just yeah. Oh, I should mention. So sometime during the 1940s, I don't know when exactly. Uh, and I believe it's during the 1940s, I may have to check up on this, um, the Italian player substitutes out for a different Italian player called the Hanged Man who stays in control of Italy until the end of the game. Uh, so I will get that fixed on power rankings next episode. At the moment it's still saying Mujus, and I don't know when exactly that substitution happens, but apparently it did have some impact in the, uh, some considerable impact in the press. Um, because it's a different player, <laughs> and different players play differently. Uh, to the surprise of everyone. <laughs> but yes, so the um, the Ionian to Eastern Med 
not happening means Italy gets nowhere with this, and it didn't, like, I, I suppose the Gian Cousin Com was to try and enable Romania to get into Bulgaria, but Russia completely outplays the Austrian here. Um, although... Galicia really needed to cut Ukraine. Yeah. Um, it tried to support Cilicia to Warsaw, which didn't happen. Um, I suppose that's a fair one if you were expecting the Germans to go there, but uh, clearly the German was not interested. And if... Uh, if Austria had cut Ukraine here, it would have been pretty good on his part. Uh, he would have taken Romania and gotten into Serbia here and gotten his build. Um, as is yeah. not happening. It's kind of funny in that Austria might be okay with this, because Austria going down one, Austria, Austria would not be building because Austria lost Spain. So because oh. Austria went down one, Austria is able to disband Gascony, which I think is a unit Austria is happy or not having at this point. Yep. It's so, it's just an awkward yeah. unit diplomatically, I suppose. And it's not maintaining anything, it's not taking any sensors, it's just taking away a unit that could be defending the homeland. That's a very good point. Um, I don't think this was purposeful on the part of the Austrian to try and lose the supply center, but it does work out favorably in that sense. Yep. Um, and I think Italy made this move, Ionian, to... Aegean instead of Eastern Med, because Italy didn't want to let Turkey back into Ionian. I think Italy was worried about that for some reason. And so Italy wanted to wait until Venice can cover Ionian before vacating Ionian. They do finally move Venice to Apulia. It may be going somewhere. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's probably going to Ionian, right? And then it's free to build an army. I would expect to see army Venice now. Yes. Um, although that might put Austria on edge. We'll see. Yeah, well, who cares what Austria thinks? <laughs> Austria is busy at war with Russia, so... Yeah, that's true. Um, and France doing whatever he can to hold his centers here. Uh, if that army in Gascony comes off, it's going to be an even more difficult situation for him. Um, he really needs this Russia-Germany alliance to break down. Yeah, and like, again, the army Silesia, army Munich, army Sweden indicates that it's not super solid, right? Yep, especially not on the German part, and uh, if Austria put in this support of Cilicia to Warsaw, the German must at least have been open to considering it uh, for Austria to make a move like that in the first place. Um, yeah. But yes, so uh, anything else to talk about here, or shall we move on? Um, Germany's finally going to see now. Yes. And there's nothing protecting Edinburgh anymore, so it looks likely that France is going to start losing northern centers. And then who is going to be the one to get those English centers? That is a question that could totally lead to the breakdown of the alliance in the north. Yeah, and that's got to be what France is hoping for. Um, if Russia and Germany don't coordinate on this, then France could still hold these centers. We have to see. Yeah, and I mean, if France can just wait for another for a little bit longer, France might get another fleet into the south, right? Because remember, France disbanded Picardy, but didn't lose any centers this turn. So France is actually a building, and <laughs> I would assume builds fleet brass. It is, which means France can get flat, um, units into the south and get another fleet in Western Med plus Mid Atlantic Ocean, right? So like, I miss yeah, France that. can survive, man. That's, uh, yeah, that's an interesting one. I completely forgot that they had the build here. Um, so, uh, yeah, Fleet oh, wait, Brest makes sense. Oh, army's going off the board. I think Army Brest is also viable because it can go straight to Gascony. That's true, and then you have to try and, like, pressure out Iberia, get back on the board in that area, and just hold out until these other nations start going to war with each other. Portugal yep. is a really nice province in that respect. It's very difficult to knock anyone out of. You can just turtle there forever <laughs> yeah portugal's the best supply center in the game that's a controversial take i think most people would say it's munich but certainly if you're yeah, a one right. center power portugal is better <laughs> if you're a one center power portugal is better if you want to hold the stalemate line on either side with fleets portugal is the most important unit yep portugal is critical to that it, it can whoever has portugal controls the mid-atlantic ocean and the mid-atlantic ocean is absurdly important 
Munich is like on the stalemate line, and like, yeah, whatever, but nah. Munich's good, don't get me wrong, I'll take Munich if, if I like it, right? I, I enjoy me in Munich, but like, what, are you really going to Tyrolia for Munich? Is that actually your plan? Because like, that doesn't happen. So the, the interesting thing about Munich is the reason it's considered so important is that practically every solo takes it, right? The interesting thing about Portugal is the reason that practic that so many solos don't take it is because it's so easy to defend. <laughs> so yeah. people need to take centers like Munich instead and, and cross over into Warsaw and Moscow. Um, yeah, but if you have Portugal, you can build a solo on that side. Yep. Right. <laughs> That's the plus. Uh, but yes, and if you're a one center power, it's fantastic. Try and get into Portugal as a one center power. This is something... Uh, when I started watching YouTube videos on diplomacy, there's another guy called Triumvir412 who used to post. He's long gone, unfortunately, but uh, maybe he'll come back someday. Um, I remember watching one of his videos when he was playing on the PPSC variant on web diplomacy, which means you you uh, get points even if someone else solos as long as you survive. Um, and his strategy, if he got knocked down to almost nothing, would always be, okay, send everything west, we're going for Portugal. <laughs> if I can get into Portugal, I can live. And he survived most of those games. Um, which... <laughs> Points for supply center. There are lots of bad scoring systems out there, right? And people frequently argue about the best scoring system. I have not seen a worse scoring system than points per supply center. Um... Yep. And I would love for someone in the comments to give me one. <laughs> um, but it just... The fact that you would still get points, even if someone else soloed, is just... was absolutely absurd. Completely ridiculous. Yeah, we should say... Um, like, I should point out here, this is not like the modern concept of points per supply center, where in a draw you get the number of points equal to your supply centers, and in a win, the solo person takes all the Set at all the points. In this version of points per supply center, in a draw, the points would be divided equally between all the remaining players, and in a win, everyone would get points equal to their supply center. So it could actually be more beneficial for you to let someone else win than it was to take a draw at a particular point if you were, had a lot of supply centers and were in a strong second. That was a ludicrous scoring system. I'm very glad it's gone. <laughs> It was, it, it, again, it, it, yes, I believe firmly that this was the worst scoring system for diplomacy ever implemented. And, like, man, did it have some nonsense. Yeah. Alright, anyways, let's, All go right. on to the next, let's go on to the next one. Let's see. It's not, not, about it's not particularly center. relevant to this, although points per supply center was a thing when this was going on. It was just not used in tournaments because it was terrible. Um, because so, everyone who was directly turning this said, I'm not going to use that trash. To, to real scoring system. To winter 1942. Here we go. Gascony comes off. Army Brest goes on. Uh, and Army, Army Naples. Well, Jeez. I mean, Army Venice is a little too aggressive, right? Yeah. It's getting convoyed to Albania. <laughs> that would be a fun move. That's going to get convoyed to Albania, I guarantee it. Is it going to happen this year? Or in, in the spring? Probably not. It's probably going to happen in the fall. But yeah, it would make sense. It's a strong position to be in as the Italian. Um, especially if you can manage to pick up a build somewhere else and put an army down in Venice. At the, after oh, I was you... just thinking you want Albania to then take Greece. Oh yeah. I was thinking we finally get the Turk off the board. But you can do it safely. Use Ionia and Albania to take Greece, while Achin and Eastern Med still mess with Russia. You can do that now, though, as long as Serbia doesn't support whole Greece. Um, you can do it, because Aegean can't yeah. be cut. But I was thinking that you'd want to use Aegean against Bulgaria or something, right? Have Aegean, like, mm. support Bulgaria, or Greece into Bulgaria or something? Maybe Serbia to Bulgaria? Oh, right? you wanna yeah. You okay. using your fleets against the Russian rather than stopping it. And if you get the convoy into Albania, then you can take it, but... Yeah, you could see taking Greece, right? Greece is a good place to conquer. Yep. Would be a shame for the Turk after all these years, but uh, yeah, it could absolutely I mean, be that. He's going to get eliminated at some point, right? That's just that's just what's going to happen. I mean, speaking of that, um, power rankings, Turkey's still at the bottom. <laughs> yes. Wow. Really? Uh, wow. Yes. It's, um, it's interesting. Who is higher up here, France or Austria? I mean, France is France. And France has Portugal. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, who's more likely to survive from this game? 
You know, probably Austria, actually. Hmm. That's interesting. Like, yeah. so I know France says six next to his supply center dots, but three of those are British centers, and those don't really count. Yeah, France is very, very dependent on this Austria, not Austria, on this Russia-Germany alliance falling apart here, and it's not clear that that's going to happen. It might. And even if it does happen, Russia could still, like, snipe Liverpool and or Edinburgh. Um, and yeah. e even Germany could potentially snipe Edinburgh. Uh, so... Yeah, I think Austria I mean, actually has a more secure position. France has Portugal, right? Yes. The, the point that you raised. And so, if France can survive for can survive this aggression, France is just more likely to be in any drawing position because they can have Portugal and Marseille and Spain, and like it's just hard to eliminate that. Now the counterpoint to that as well is Austria is in a surprisingly defensible position mainly because everyone to his west has no armies. Um, well, except for Germany. Yeah, but Germany. if Germany crosses the stalemate line to the south, they'll have to do it with Russian assistance, and it feels like that puts them... well, it puts one of them too close to soloing, right? Yeah. But it's possible, though, that they could find some agreement where they say, Russia, you're going to give me Edinburgh and London and Liverpool, but I will help you into Galicia, and then I'll help you into Vienna or something. Right? That's a reasonably equitable trade they could make. And I believe that still keeps Germany safe from a Russian solo, as long as Germany stays in Silesia and such, to keep the pressure on Russia. But... Yeah, it just, if, I think it's more reasonable that two powers decide to eliminate Austria than that Russia, Germany, and Italy all decide to eliminate France, which is what will be required to eliminate France. Right, so you would put France above Austria in power rankings here? Yes. I mean... And I would put Italy above both of them, yep. and then Germany, and then Russia. Right, so you think that Ger Russia is in a better position than Germany here? I mean, I suppose three more dots. <laughs> is that the logic there? Did I, did I stutter? <laughs> yep. Um, so really, in these power rankings, all we're doing is swapping uh, Austria and Italy from their past positions. Um, Italy, that growth into, uh, into the West is pretty significant for them. Um, it's a huge boost having two extra centers over there and just having some control that isn't just the Italian homeland. Yeah, and now getting into position into a G in Eastern Med is very, very important. Wait, yeah. is Italy going to go for the latest Lepanto I've ever seen? Oh boy. I didn't realize, but the army Naples can totally be just the latest Lepanto ever. As in Apulia to Ionian, Ionian to Eastern Mediterranean, and then, uh, and then convoy, convoy into Syria. Syria. <laughs> Makes now, my Albania idea look worse, but... It's difficult to convoy into Turkey when the Turkey has two armies there. Um, yeah, but it's a guess, right? Smyrna or Syria, it's always a guess, Smyrna or Syria. It is. Uh, well, I mean, we've done our power rankings here, shall we see how things pad out in the spring. If Russia really wants to stop it and they need to send Sev to Armenia, Oof. that would be my favorite thing. If Sev has the folks in Armenia and then Russia has an army in Smyrna, Syria, and Khan. I mean, he's done it before at this point. He, he has set up that line. With an army in all of those territories? He might have had a fleet in one of them. But he's certainly That's... been messing around with three units down here for a while now. Yeah, it's just like, if those are fleets, Russia's position is so much better. Because suddenly you can actually start making plays against the Eastern Mad and the GNC and such. <laughs> you can start trying to make a forward progress. But those are all armies that you just can't do anything. And just like, well, I hope I don't lose my stuff ever. Yep. And yep. to be fair, with the army Syria, army Smyrna, army Khan... <laughs> Like, yeah, you're not going to lose any of those Turkish centers. This is true. Uh, you, can't, you can't lose it. Okay, well, let's see what happens here. Spring 1943. Yes. You're right, you're right. It's the Lepanto. Yes. And it's also yes. Sebastopol going to Armenia. Hey, and look, 
See? German army into rolling at Bohemia. Yep, Germany crosses the line. Uh, this is unexpected, from my end at least. Um, I think that's a little risky. But yeah, the Russians getting Edinburgh. It might not actually be, because the German is going to gain a pretty significant amount out of this, potentially, and he's across the stalemate line with it. It's just so difficult to see how this doesn't result in total war between the German and the Russian, to the point where one of them should be stopping the other. Um, yeah, it definitely feels like the calm before the war is is happening right now. Yep. They're just both taking the dots that they can before they face off against one another. And, and in, when that war breaks out, Russia has a pretty significant edge, I would assume, because France is still alive, right? And yep. Paris and Brest are going to be contested in the future. How long is it going to be before that happens? Unclear. Yep. Here, um... By the way, Portugal not tapping Spain ended up really costing the French. Yeah. Like, oof. They could have just taken that. Well, I mean, that would have been huge. Um, obviously, the Russian could have ensured that the Italian got back in with uh, by tapping Middle Atlantic Ocean, but still, getting the chance to, to hold Iberia there, just passing yeah. that up is painful. <laughs> and because Marseille moved to Gascony, there wasn't actually a guarantee. Because Spain could retreat to Marseille. Yes, it can. That's true. Um, so, right. yes, it would have been huge to move. This is why don't hold units you don't need to hold. <laughs> yeah, and Portugal is one of the units that you just never want to hold, right? You always tap Spain. Because if you have Mid-Atlantic Ocean, Portugal's safe. Okay, you support hold Mid-Atlantic Ocean a lot. Yes. That's, that's fair. That's fair. But, hey, like... but you don't outright hold, ever. <laughs> right? Yeah, outright holding Portugal is... Yes, a lot of moves that you do. Yep. It's fine. I mean, France is probably okay, right? Like, it just it seems likely to me that this that France just needs to last for like three years and then start crawling his way back into the game. Yep. He's done it before, right? He was down to Portugal, Spain, Marseille, right? And then he got back to seven centers or whatever. Yeah, he was. Um, um, although those centers are a little more defensible than just Portugal. Uh, although just yeah, Portugal is very right? strong, still. What's Italy gonna do? Right, no one's gonna break <laughs> this. <laughs> I like it. France is fine. Yep. Um. So, uh, much else to discuss here. We get the Austrian taking Romania, um, and managing to bounce Galicia. I think that means it's guaranteed. Yes, because uh, Budapest and Serbia can just support hold yes. it here. Yeah, Romania is not being taken this this turn. But then the question is, do you lose Vienna? Because if you double support Romania, then Vienna's at risk. Yes. So there is still risk for Austria. But then even if you support Vienna, Trieste is still at risk. <laughs> so it's a difficult one to figure out. Um, yeah, awkward, isn't it? Yeah. I guess you kind of have to, if you want to defend against all possible German open German moves, you have to go Serbia to Trieste, which isn't that bad because there's nothing adjacent to it that can take Serbia. Uh, but it's still painful in that you're giving up Romania again after <laughs> you just forced it, managed to get through. Yeah. The Russian is getting Edinburgh, so he's not going to be disbanding either way, though. Um, unless North Sea goes to Norway here, which would be amusing. Um, I don't... I don't think that's likely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would, um, I would predict against that move happening. I think uh, Germany's doing well enough out of this that they don't need to stab here. Um, God, could you imagine if Germany had gone for the stab, though? Right. Like, right Just here. This with... turn, the, instead of these moves, right? North Sea to Norway, Helgeland to North Sea, Sweden to Finland, Silesia to Prussia, Munich to Silesia. Oh. Right. Then you're getting St. Pete and Norway, guaranteed, and you're... Russia's got to defend Warsaw from you, and he's probably just going to support hold Warsaw. So you get to move into Livonia and Prussia while you're taking St. Pete with an army. So you're going to have two on Moscow building in Munich, so you can move it into Silesia and Berlin, probably. So you probably do Berlin to Silesia and Munich to whatever, and then you're probably going to take Warsaw and Moscow next year. 
and then Russia is just like a sitting duck. Oh, plus Paris, you don't get to build a fleet KL to go with it? Yeah. That would have been... That's how you go to on a solo path, man. That, but instead, he took a simple a simple move. That does feel like the kind of moveset that is going to get people like Austria uniting against you, though. Um, which is obviously the downside. Although Austria is going to be turning around here anyway. <laughs> uh, Austria is probably going against you with this order set, too. Yeah, but the difference is you ha you still have Russia on side here. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think this is... Like I said, this is a totally viable moveset. This is a much safer moveset that's likely to work, and it's going to keep you around for a long time. Whereas if you go after that corner position against the Russian, when they've still got two fleets to the north, it can get awkward quickly. Yep. My thinking is just, like, Italy is... Italy can't attack you, right? Italy can't do anything against you. Maybe that's with Paris or whatever. But Italy's got four units that are going to be trying to take Turkey from Russia. Right? That's going to happen. And if Russia wants to defend those three Turkish dots in the south, they're going to have to commit three or four units down there. So... Russia might not be that much of a threat after you just neuter them like this. This is true. Right. And then you're building three... Yeah, I don't know. That would have been that would have been a potent move set. But we're not in that world. We're in this world instead. So Okay, well, um anything else to talk about in this world? I guess this shuffle around in France with uh, with Germany taking Paris and France trying to well, hoping that the cut would come well the move would come from Picardy. Uh sorry, the move would come from Burgundy and they could cut Picardy. That did not pan it out. <laughs> um, yeah, or that there would be a strength two on Brest, right? Yep. But instead, this was the guaranteed way to take Paris, so. Yeah, I do wonder whether Portugal holding... Maybe France cut some kind of deal with Italy here? Uh, but the fact that Marseille went to Gascony seems to indicate not, because that can't support hold Paris or Brest without Spain having gone to Lyon so it could cover Marseille. Right. Um... Um, here, the Italian is just going to have to move straight back again. Uh, yeah. Right. So, let's go to fall 1943, then. Hey, look, Italy moved back into the centers. Yep, <laughs> back into Marseille. Uh, <gasps> no, Turkey! Oh! Oh, no! Oh, man, that sucks. The Lepanto does not occur. Yeah, the Army I mean... and Armenia finally covered it. Russia said no. <laughs> I refuse. Yep. And oh, after 43 years of fighting, this poor Turk just They even gets... retreated to Albania. They didn't choose to disband. <laughs> you gotta the respect the hustle move. there. It's like... Man, I've been playing this game for a year and a half. I'm gonna leave my mark, even if it's just turning this center, this uh, non-center purple, uh, purple, yellow, 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 yellow yeah. for a couple of years. I don't know how long it's gonna stay yellow. Let's see. <laughs> that sucks. Man, oof. I mean, he, I guess it kind of had to happen after the uh, protection of of Syria. It's clear Italy wasn't going to gain anything from this attack down here. Um, plus, they had to move their army back up north because of this incursion into Tyrolia, so they couldn't convoy across anyway. Uh, but it's still like, oh, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah uh, I feel for him. That's rough. Yep. Um, so now, in the meantime, right, Russia is getting Edinburgh and staying even in the south, and Germany took Paris, and other than that, no supply centers changed hands. Yeah. So interesting to note the uh, the French player tried to support the Italian as Paris. So that would have been successful and would have blown up the German army here. Um, they could have equally supported Picardy into Paris and actually gotten it. Um, yeah. Which is painful. But I think this was a neat order set, right? I like this order set from France because you can tell. Italy, look, I'm supporting you into Paris, okay? I'm also tapping Belgium. So the only way that Germany stops me from taking Belgium and stops you from taking Paris and takes Marseille would require the North Sea, right? 
he would need to have Burgundy support hold Paris while the North Sea covers Belgium. Yep. And so if any other order set happens, then either he ends up in Belgium or Gascony ends up in Paris. And so it kind of freezes the North Sea and Burgundy for a turn if it had been ordered. But instead, Italy didn't go with it. And so here we are. So, yep pain for france going minus two here they do manage to protect london um guessing correctly on whether the convoy would be to london or to yorkshire uh, actually going yeah. very risky with this wales move to english channel not bothering to cover anything with that uh yeah i mean that part he's pays off. That unit to the south right his position is too weak so he needs to get more units into the south and he needs that fleet he's gonna take yorkshire or like Picardy off or something and he needs he does need to get back into Western Med. Yep. I'm trying to which one of these is the unit that was in Clyde? Um I think it's probably Mid Atlantic at this point. Well, yeah. I hope it's not Yorkshire. <laughs> I think Yorkshire is still the same Yorkshire unit. In fact I'm gonna go back a few phases to find out which one is which here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this this is the uh the fleet that came from Clyde. Yeah, North well, Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean. Ocean's a pretty safe place for it. Okay, so yes, our crusading fleet, the Syria one, is currently in Wales. Um, and the... And, yeah, the one that's been to Barents and Eastern Mediterranean is in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. So they're both still alive, which is a plus. <laughs> I, I'm really invested in those two fleets now. I don't want to see them take it off. I wonder if the I mean, actual France French lots a bunch of fleets right now, right? So I don't think France is going to be disbanding... Either one of those, right? So yeah, it's probably going to... Right, Yorkshire's probably coming off. It's got to be Yorkshire. Um, so, uh, elsewhere, things... The only thing we haven't mentioned, I think, is the Austrian defense here. Um, successfully bounces uh, out of Galicia. He would have known that that attack was coming because uh, they would have dis had to discuss it in the public press. So this does seem like the probably the optimal move set here there's not really a ton else you could do uh, he could have done no he couldn't have done any better right he couldn't have protected both Galicia and Trieste and Romania um, he had to lose one of the three yep and he does get to rebuild that unit in Trieste which is nice from a defensibility point of view uh, yeah so Shall we move on? Let's see it. Winter 1943. Portugal comes Whoa. off. No! Why? Well, I suppose there's I nothing mean, adjacent, so he can move Mid-Atlantic to Portugal, but... Trying to make peace with Italy. He's saying, hey Italy, you know what? I don't need to defend myself if you're willing to defend me for me. But... Ah. Ah. You want to take Spain here, though. That's your best survivability like, prospects. And Yorkshire, really? Is that the best? Is that a good unit to keep on the board here? Is that better than Picardy? It's... I mean, Picardy came off anyway, right? The, uh... My bad, yeah. Is it better than Portugal? Not a chance! Not in a million years! <laughs> yeah. Because English Channel, Portugal, and Atlantic Ocean is just going to be annoying to break, right? You just bring English Channel back to Mid-Atlantic and, oh, whatever. It's fine. I mean, to be fair, he does have two English centers, right? He, he does, does have Liverpool and London. It's just like, Liverpool, lost. Liverpool you can't defend, especially not with Yorkshire. That's, uh, fleets can't yeah. do that. Um, London, you could have defended with English Channel because there's only one unit on it. Sure, they're probably going to force it anyway, but then... Like, Yorkshire holds it for at most a year longer. It's not that helpful. Yeah, maybe if you're trying to convoy Brest up to Wales or something. Like, but Yorkshire can't mm. support that. Yorkshire does nothing. Yorkshire's a worthless fucking fleet. I God. don't... Yeah, I don't think this was the right move. I think France should be attempting to take Spain here and just make sure they have that area they can survive in because their most important thing right now is surviving until the the uh, RG breaks up, and so I completely agree. Second of all, even if you're trying to defend England, Yorkshire's not a good unit for that. Yep. Like, oddly enough, 
I feel like Fleet Portugal might be more useful here because it supports the Mid Atlantic Ocean, mm. which is really important. Slash can fill into Mid Atlantic Ocean. If you do something like English Channel supports Mid Atlantic Ocean to Irish Sea, you can then have Portugal go to Mid Atlantic Ocean, and then you end up in the Irish Sea, right? Like, I don't know, man. Yep, Yorkshire is kind of stuck in Yorkshire. And there's always the potential that they force it out into the North Sea, in which case it will have been worth it, but Maybe I don't think Germany's going to let armies. that happen. Sorry, go Maybe on. you're supposed to pop both armies. Maybe you're supposed to take off Brest and keep Yorkshire. Hmm. That seems questionable to me. I think there's a chance that you keep Brest with the one army because Italy is in Marseille. Um, yeah. But... Well, you're not going to. Hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. There's a chance, I agree. But I think having all of these fleets, you might be able to make a stand for London and Liverpool. You might be able to, to try. Yep. Um... It sucks. Alright, France, good luck. Well, the other disband here, and the thing we have to give a salute to our Turkish player. Thank you for playing for all these years and uh, for for not NMRing as much as any of the other players have. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Austria has only done one, right? Probably, uh, but yes, I mean congratulations for surviving that long and for like keeping going in this game for that long. But I will yeah. have to now remove you from the power rankings. I bat a bomb, and then there were five. Alright, that is disappointing to see, but hey, it's it happens in diplomacy. Um, yeah, it's the nature of an elimination game. Feels bad. You hate to see him go. And one more fleet for Italy, is that the right build? That's an odd I mean, one. look man. If you're gonna be France, you want the fleet, right? Yep. This does kind of indicate that fleet has to go that way because there's nothing else it can what really else is it do. Gonna do in the east. You already got the fleet Greece, Gian, and Eastern Med. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay, uh, and you don't even need to defend Ionian anymore because this um, this Turkish fleet Turkey is off the board. Yeah, I yeah. think Army Rome would have just been like very good because then you can get into Piedmont from Venice and Rome goes into Venice and you can maybe try to take Tyrolia. Right, yep. you can like do that type of thing, but it's no, fine. This Italy is a seafaring nation. He's following the German precedent from all the way back at the start. <laughs> yep. uh, let's go to spring 1944. Here we are. Okay. Oh, heavy movements to the west by Italy here. Very heavy. Um, yeah, sucks to be France, man. Imagine France, Portugal. France vacates Mid-Atlantic Ocean as well, so they can't even hold Portugal now. There's nothing adjacent to it. Well, remember when you said that Portugal's an important center? <laughs> Ouch. Well. I mean, there's still a guessing game, because Brest is a thing. Uh, Brest moved to Gascony, even Gascony is a thing, but... Marseille covers Spain. Spain covers Portugal, and like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, he can move to Gascony, but you know what you're, f or he can move to Marseille, but you know what you're fine with losing Marseille because then trains you lose the Gulf of Leon, and like, what's he gonna do? Yep, that's uh, this is just painful for the uh, for the French player. Um, and yeah, yeah, the Yorkshire does successfully cover London mainly because Germany held How does this all his go on units for another eighty years. <laughs> it's not it's not 80 years at this point it's only 60 um but I yes. thought it was 2025 no it, it finishes in 2004 I think um only 60 more years <laughs> but that's Excuse still me. quite a few years how does this game go on another 60 years <laughs> what you tell me this position doesn't get started out French just dies, right? And then they agree for four away? Well, I mean, they right. all want the win. That's uh, At this point, every other game in the tournament will have finished, so I think every team knew they needed a solo, apart from the Italian team needed it to draw, because um, they were in the lead. Uh, but if no one else wa is willing to draw, right. then... Uh... Do you know who was in second place? Because that means if Italy got eliminated, then the second place team presumably would have won with a draw here, right? I don't actually know. I think most of these um, teams needed a solo in order to win, uh, which... Really? Italy was e so far ahead. Yeah, uh, that 
I, I don't want to say something that's wrong, but I think Italy was Team California, which is your current team. Um, so you're... I mean, the <laughs> predecessors, but I don't think we have any members that are the same. It's mainly because they all just got tired after four years of playing this game. Uh, yeah, I mean... Yes. The Hangman was on a previous team... He was on the previous iteration of Team California after this one. He, he's still around, I, I know. Mm. Um, yeah, he was, I think, the sub for the team that I that I hosted when we made it to the finals and got, like, third or whatever. But, yeah. That was a, that was a feels bad game. So, <laughs> that game in that finals did not go well. But, yeah. yes, so uh, the, the Italian team wants this to draw at this point. Everyone else is looking for a solo. Um, and... So the only, if everyone's determined, the only way this is going to end is if uh, someone solos because, or if the Italian team is so close to a solo that no one can stop them and they just are like, okay, you've won. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's technically anonymous, right? But like, everyone knows who everyone is, I would yeah. assume. Yeah, apparently everyone had figured out who everyone else was within like the first 10 years of the game. Um, so. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so, yes, other things that are happening on this board. Um, Irish Sea getting dislodged retreats into Liverpool, as you'd expect here. Um, the German holds are interesting and odd. You would have thought that Paris would tap Brest at the very least. I think maybe he entered some provisional orders and then... Well, I mean... Yeah, back you in... expect TL to Holland or Telgland or Denmark or something, right? Yeah, uh, back Probably into... Probably you'd expect to see the Convoy Denmark out. Like, there are were, there were moves you would expect to see. Backing into Cilicia and Munich, I mean, maybe he's going anti-Russia at this point, although it's a very non-committal anti-Russia right now. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna hold in North Sea for a turn and pretend it was an NMR and then go to Norway, but oops, I accidentally yeah. entered a move into Belgium as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean... To be fair, right, If with Russia moving Clyde into North Atlantic and Edinburgh into Clyde, his position just got worse against you, right? He he has nothing that could impact the North Sea, and if you happen to get into Norwegian Sea and are in the North Sea, then he has a really hard time getting back home to defend. Yep. Like, if you, just, if you take Norway this turn via convoy, right, hypothetically, then Russia is not building. Yeah, uh, but that's kind of all you can do. You can only one dot in this stab, which is painful. Unless you work with the Austrian um, and take yeah, Russia by surprise. Austria, then it's no longer by surprise, right? Now. Yeah. <laughs> Not in a game like this. Um, Austria would need to be like, hey, I'm supporting you into Warsaw. Take it or leave it. And then he's like, okay. Uh, something else about the Austrian here, he could have taken Bulgaria uh, with these double Italian supports, but he goes north instead. Um, that... Hmm, I, I guess, given that Tyrolia and Bohemia are around him, it kind of doesn't make sense to be expanding into somewhere like Bulgaria right now. Uh, it leaves your line a bit too thin, especially with yeah. the Russian army in Romania. Um, yeah, it's a little awkward because... Um... Italy needs Bulgaria to be controlled by Austria so that Italy can afford to move into Eastern Med and Aegean and have Greece be safe, mm. right? But if that doesn't happen, then they just have to stay in Greece and Aegean and Russia's going to be fine forever. Yeah. Important note but, here, if the German does stab in the north, it's probably going to be like Sirius Manicon that end up coming off the board, right? Which might be why he's not outright stabbing. Um, I mean, presumably nothing Sirius comes off the board here. Um, yes. Because Liverpool would be taken and uh, Germany would take Norway, so it would go plus or minus zero, which is kind of the ideal time, way to one dot uh, to prevent a build in this case. So then your yeah. enemy can't take off something in the south. <laughs> but yeah, um, we'll have to see if that happens. Uh, anything else? Yeah, to when talk you're stabbing about? someone, make sure they're not building. That's like a very good rule of thumb. Yep. I have... A very good way to prevent a stab. Yeah, this is always the, the problem with some stabs is that uh, you stab too well and maybe blow up a few enemy units on the turn that you stab and suddenly all their units are back at home again ready to defend against you. <laughs> yes. Uh, 
it's, it's it, and that's why stabs like this from Germany, the, this potential stab from Germany would be so good because you just get a good position, but you don't actually, you just deny him this this build, right? But you get the army in Norway, which can then walk to Saint Pete, and again, you can get into Prussia and Livonia, and Russia's just gonna have a hard time fighting. Yep. But it doesn't happen. We see Germany stick to the stick to the plan. Okay. Um, and I think that's everything to talk about here, really. Right? Let's see it. Let's go to fall 1944. Here we are. And Austria goes straight back. Um, it's like, okay, <laughs> I, I, I vacationed in Galicia for a bit, now I'm going back again. Uh, Mistake! <laughs> uh, oh, and the, the French unit guesses correctly on Spain. Which is yeah. another fun thing over there. Um, I mean, you also can't hold Spain, right? No. Is <laughs> Not in the slightest. No, so... yeah. There's no way France gets eliminated, right? That can't possibly happen. <laughs> I think he's gonna get killed right now. No. Wait a second! Is France building? Is France building? No, he lost no. Portugal. Wait. He lost Portugal, oh. but Liverpool is empty, and he gained Spain, right? So France is at, France is neutral. <laughs> Why did Russia leave Liverpool for France? That seems odd. What is he doing? <laughs> Maybe he <laughs> wanted to be able to disband Syria if the Germans stabbed him here. But the the convoy over to Edinburgh is weird as well. Why is the why is that happening with no Why is it the convoy to Edinburgh? Um, it was probably supposed to be a supply center trade, right? Hmm. So we're just saying, all right, you're at eleven. I'm at eight. I want to be at nine, and I'll let you be at twelve. So give me Edinburgh. And then Russia was like, sure, I'll give you Edinburgh. And then. Oops, he did not give him Edinburgh. And he let the French survive in Liverpool. I wonder if this is going to be a late-blossoming uh, Russia-France alliance here, but it doesn't seem like Russia's in position to do that. You do not want to be annoying the German right now um, with nothing near St. Petersburg. <laughs> yeah. Well, Syria is moving to Armenia, right? This is true. It's, it is much closer to Moscow than Syria. It is. Um, and Russia suddenly have some of the pressure lifted by the the uh, Austrian backing off, although not a ton of the pressure lifted. There is still a significant amount of pressure there. Um, yeah. Also, Munich in Tyrolia is much worse against Russia than than Munich because it can't go to Silesia and with Silesia going to Prussia. This is true. Um, you got to wonder what this move here is for. <laughs> To yeah, yeah. It's, annoying. it's just trying to be involved on the eastern side of the board and like say mm, you know <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I'm here so I can help whichever of you is doing worse um, but yeah uh, so man the, the, the move to Edinburgh is interesting and I can't wait to see where that goes uh, and yeah. the move to Spain saves a, a French unit for a year which is cool except like what's the unit in Yorkshire even doing right now I suppose it was attempting to prevent a German convoy but it's yeah uh... I mean if, it, if there was no unit in London I would have expected to see Germany convoy into London right and then plus tapping breast means they would have lost one so it did its job kept the dot yep uh, so and I don't think there's any adjudic uh 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 adjustments this turn, right? Because everyone's neutral. Yeah, I think so. Um, Only supply centers changing hand are Portugal and Spain. Yep. So. Swapping hands. Uh, so we... Oh, so we'll have to do power rankings now. Um, oh. They okay. kind of... That's right. Well, I think the only thing that's happened is that uh, France has dropped below Austria, right? It's hard to argue that France has a better position than Austria now that... Uh, uh, they lost now Portugal. that they lost yep. Portugal, yep. yep. I agree. I think I think he's officially below. Below, man, that's rough. Yeah, man, it's such a better position if you keep uh, Portugal. It's still not a good position <laughs> by any means. Oh, don't this this whole attack from Italy just doesn't do anything. Mm. Like if you're in Portugal, Mid Atlantic Ocean, and Spain and Gascony, right? Italy can have whatever they want. 
and then you're just like, derp, derp. You don't get to hurt me. I'm just gonna <laughs> stick here and never die. Yeah. Like, I, I could see viewers thinking here that, um, Portugal, like, with the Italian coming up like this, uh, they could force Mid-Atlantic and take Portugal. Nice thing about Portugal is you only really need one person in the north who wants you to survive there and who wants Italy to be doing worse. Uh, and then they can just pull you back out again or, you know, tap Mid-Atlantic Ocean, anything like that drastically increases your chances of survival there. It's so difficult to take Portugal. Um, yeah, I mean, fleet Portugal, fleet North Atlantic Ocean, plus any southern fleet, right, go fully on Western Med, North Africa, or Army Gascony, and then Portugal is safe forever. Yep. Right, if you can maintain those units, Portugal can never die. And, like, yeah, admittedly these are difficult units to maintain, but you're fine. You're, you're totally fine. Portugal would have been amazing to keep him alive, but he lost it, so... Yep, and it, it's very, and very... It's very, very rare that the... A, a power in the north wants a power in the south to take Portugal. <laughs> I don't think it's in Germany's interests or Russia's interests here for Italy to be in Portugal, but yeah, they can't stop it now that the uh, the French left it, so here we are. Um, with our power rankings redone here, let's move ahead to uh, the spring of 1945. We are moving right. into the end of the real world war here. Uh, the end of the real second world war, even. <laughs> which, uh... Yeah, you need to specify which war you're talking about in this game. <laughs> yep. Uh, what? Um... Atlantic Ocean Convoy, Spain to North Africa. I mean, that's... I love it. That's an attempt to save the unit, right? That's, uh... To save the unit, and if they've taken Spain from Western Med, you just waltz into Tunis. This is true. Oh, Peter, I'm fine. <laughs> but instead, Western Med just covers Tunis, and then they're still dealing with Spain. Marseille specifically didn't choose to support himself into Spain. Yeah. This is an odd one. They're okay with the French being in Spain, so they're just gonna say, you know what, France, it's fine. Uh, I guess everyone right now is trying to leverage the French units against everyone else, right? Um, the the Russian clearly wants to hold French units against the Italian. The Italian maybe wants uh, France to keep Spain so that they keep something like Yorkshire on the board, which is meddling with the German and the Russian plans. Um, although more the German here. Uh, yeah, Yorkshire's been ridiculously good against North Sea and Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right? For like, what, three turns in a row? Guess is correctly here again. Yeah, and so um, good. blocks the German owls. <laughs> and Tyrolia back to Munich. Just so we're clear, we've gone Munich to Tyrolia, to Munich to Tyrolia, to Munich. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's a. Uh, I mean, I'd say it's painful to watch, but the German can kind of afford it here. He's not losing anything yeah, by going back and forth. Except that now the Russian has had time to decide that he doesn't really want to be involved in the South after all, so he's going to back out of Galicia and give the Austrians some room. Um, yeah, and Syria is back in Sevastopol now. Yep. Right? That is a very different position. Mainly, now, if you convoy Denmark up to Norway, um then Sevastopol will be in Moscow and can block you out of St. Petersburg, uh, which is a huge difference. Um, cannot be stated how huge of a difference that is. Uh, taking St. Petersburg with an army is just huge, if you can manage it. Especially if you can get into Livonia, which is very likely with this German position. Yep. Uh, and Germany decides to move into Picardy and Belgium to try and get position on the English Channel, which is an interesting one. I guess to try and get position on Brest as well. Like, there's no way the French fleet in Brest is surviving this turn. Uh, surviving this turn, I mean, it seems unlikely. I would be... <laughs> something would have to happen. Well, this is the Crusading fleet, maybe it's been blessed. Um, yeah... We'll have oh to god, see Oh god, Ocean is the Clyde fleet, right? Yep. <laughs> Oh no! I feel like that one's gonna survive though, right? You you want to keep Mid Atlantic Ocean here? No, you probably. Mm, 
If your last sense is a Liverpool and London, you probably don't, actually. <laughs> what if, okay, what if Mid Atlantic Ocean can support English Channel, can support Brest into English Channel, right? And yeah. There's no reason for anyone to cut Mid Atlantic Ocean, right? Yeah. This is true, I think. Um, that's how that's how we have to see. Let's, let, all right, all right. I wanted to see that. All right, and yeah, in the south, it's just peace here. Um, the Italian is trying to support the Austrian against the Russian, but it's pretty clear that the Russian is making peace with the Austrian here. Maybe seeing the strength of the Italian position in the uh, west and saying, "Okay, Austria, you need to be my buffer to this." Um, yeah. Okay. I think I realized why Italy wanted to self bounce in Spain. So. Let's say that Germany had moved into Gascony from Paris, okay? Yep. Kept the army in Burgundy. Let's say that France, uh, that, that Italy took, kicked France out of Spain with Gulf of Leon. So now Italy has a fleet in Spain's south coast, western Med Portugal. If France cuts Spain, then Italy loses Marseille. Yes. If Italy takes Spain from western Med, then North Af they retreat to North Africa and then take Tunis. So this actually is the only way to ensure that Italy keeps the centers they currently have. That's smalls. Um and yeah, that seems sensible. Uh this is Yeah, that makes sense. It it, it makes more sense than wanting uh them wanting to work with France here, especially considering they're tapping Mid Atlantic Ocean at the same time. Um, so, there's no reason to take a center on spring phase if you can take it in the fall anyway. Uh, or at least sometimes there are reasons, but in this case, it seems like it's better not. And it's only build be... after the fall, you don't build after the spring. Yep. <laughs> Something that a lot of newer players get uh, wrong is trying to take centers in the spring and then moving else in the fall. Um, <laughs> That's obviously not going to happen here, but uh, yeah, it, it's a good play by the Italian. It means he can now block Tunis and take Spain at the same time, potentially. Depends how well the uh, German and French can work together, but I don't think they will. This uh, German appears to want to kill the French player. Yep. This line of units here says that. Shall we go ahead and see if they do? Well, yep. they won't outright kill them here, but... Could be painful for them regardless. Oh, our crusading fleet is gone. Yeah, Germany actually said that is dying unless Italy doesn't tap Mid-Atlantic Ocean. I mean, Mid-Atlantic could have tapped Gascony here and saved it, but that would have been a uh, a move that could have lost them the Mid-Atlantic, which is... You're right. I didn't think Mid-Atlantic Ocean was allowed to move, but you're technically right. It totally was allowed to move. Forgive yep. me. Um... But painful turn for France here. Uh, Germany doing the correct order set here, making sure that France couldn't pull their fleet out into the English Channel. Getting rid of that holy blessing on the uh, on fleet breast. Getting yeah, it off the and board. Now, and they finally guessed correctly on the convoy as well. Yep. Oof. Oof. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens up there, because Russia clearly doesn't want France losing centers. Um... And well, now the German is in position to force it. to stop Italy from taking Mid-Atlantic Ocean, right? Yeah. And now that there's a German fleet in English Channel, then their, three, their two fleets, plus the German fleet in English Channel, can ensure that. Yeah, I think there's also some degree of not wanting Germany to take the English centers, though, because they could have supported this convoy into the Yorkshire so many times, um, and they chose not to. At this point, though, they can't really prevent the German from taking those centers anymore. Um, well, I mean, tapping North Sea does a pretty good job, but not, not enough, of he's course. In, he's in English Channel as well, though. Um, yeah, but, like, I mean, Irish Sea can tap that in as well. It's just it's not worth it at this point. It's just like, yeah. I think you just kill the French. I think you just yeah. let Sherman take London while you take Liverpool and say, bye, France. Okay, thanks. Mm. Um, we, and uh, the move Munich from Berlin, um, Munich to Berlin even, doesn't actually matter all that much because Germany's getting a build regardless, but it looks interesting in the sense of its positioning to move against Russia. Yeah. It looks suspicious. If I'm the Russian player, that move makes me raise my eyebrow. Yep. <laughs> And then I look at my centers and realize, oh dear. 
Although, Ooh. good news from the for the Russian in the south, with uh, Austria taking the support into Greece, trying to knock the Italian out of that center. Um, so yeah, the Aust- but like not moving into Tyrol yet, right? Not like fully committing against the Italian, just like, yeah, sure. I'll see yep. if I can take Greece for free. He's like, I'm more likely to take Greece than I am to take Bulgaria, and I want a dot. <laughs> it is the reasoning here. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see if the Italian is angry about that. It certainly gives the Italian a good reason to build an army. Um, yeah, army Rome seems very likely, but at the same time, Italy might want a fourth fleet, because they can then use that fleet, stick in North Africa, and then hold the stalemate line for a while. Yep. Um... But depends whether Austria is going to attack them or not. <laughs> uh, um, so, much else to discuss here? It's not a lot, really. The, like, we've kind of covered everything. It's just a sad, sad turn for that poor French fleet. Went yep. all the way to Syria. But thankfully, its more well traveled cousin is still alive in the Middle Atlantic Ocean and probably survives here unless France chooses to take off something that's not North Africa, which feels like it would be a mistake. <laughs> yeah, and also, I mean, I think it's likely that this French fleet dies this year. I think it's very likely that France is off the board, like, right now. Yeah. Uh, I think so, too. Like, there's no reason for the Russian not to take Liverpool anymore, um, given that the German will probably take it if they don't. Um, so... Let's go ahead to the build phase. Let's see him. Winter 1945, Army Munich. That makes sense. Uh, Army North Africa off the board also makes sense. The least uh, useful unit here. Um, And Fleet Naples. Not an army. This Italy is just going all out in the the sea. that feels wrong at this point. <laughs> well, if your reading is correct, one second. No worries. <clears throat> Sorry. So if um if Italy just needs a draw, which is our assessment of the scoring situation at this point, then I could see only fleets being the best path to a draw for Italy. Because you just want to stalemate up the board, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's like it feels painful just letting the letting go of any chance of expanding into like Austrian centers, or even expanding further on the uh, Western Front. There's no way you're going to get that much further with just fleets. <laughs> uh, but yeah. If they're going to keep their alliance with Austria intact, this this is the best way to do it. Just continuously build fleets. Um, never threaten them. Uh, so, yes, uh, we thankfully still have this well-traveled uh, French fleet on the board in Mid-Atlantic Ocean. Um, and the army munis is, is predictable. It's just the most uh, flexible unit here. You don't really want another fleet in the north right now. You've got three already. One of them's in Picardy. You kind of need to mobilize that first. Um, are you good to move ahead to Spring here? Let's see it. Let's go to Spring 1946. Uh, French NMR, <laughs> but it doesn't matter that much at this point. Wow. Um, and yeah, these. Wait, hang on. <laughs> Yeah, so the Russian is moving full scale against the uh, against the German now. Um, they really don't want France to die, to die, I guess. Um. Yeah, and I think they were expecting Germany to move against them. It seems that way. Moving into Prussia is certainly like you would think that. If Germany is moving against them, they support Munich into Silesia and then move into Prussia. So moving into Prussia is the way you counter this. Um, but yeah, supporting into Norwegian 
making sure you secure Norway here, uh, moving up to Moscow to get into St. Petersburg. These do seem fairly defensive, and it's the good relations with Austria that kind of allow them to happen. And Austria's positioning to take Greece now, like properly positioning, although the fact that he left Trieste open makes it questionable that that's actually a, an anti-Italy thing. I, I'm interested to see where this goes, because he could have taken Greece here, he could have just taken that Russian support. Um, this is just really good news for France, right? Yeah. Uh, although the convoy into Wales being successful is not as good news for France. Because um, <laughs> Germ Germany French can just... Chaos, I think Germany can just kill France anyway. Uh, with English Channel and North on London and uh, Wales and Yorkshire on Liverpool here. Uh, it is liable to cutting, but that would require the Russian assistance, and I don't know that he's going to do that. I think he he's... Uh, well, I don't know that he's going to be able to correctly tap everything. But yeah, um, being able to survive is probably... The, having a better chance of surviving is as good news as France is going to get here. Um, <laughs> we haven't even spoken about these Italian moves down here. Uh, support holding Mao makes sense, uh, make sure that the Northerners don't take it, that's a nice province to keep control of. Moving into North Africa, I guess it's to make sure that the French don't, like, revenge run for Tunis. <laughs> um, but if you were going to do that, you have a Eunice and Ionian, you might as well just push west into Mao instead, uh, and use, use uh, Ionian to cover Tunis. Um, I see Italy is trying to play this safely, just slow it down and say, hey, you're stalemated, guys, you should vote draw. That makes sense. Uh, and yeah, Italy moving out of Greece, I think that's basically just saying, okay, Austria, you can have it, um, just keep pushing against the Russian. Um, and it's, it's got to be tempting as the Austrian to just go for the Russian dots now that he's gone north. <laughs> C dot take dot. Right. <laughs> yeah, with Black Sea being vacated, Romania and Bulgaria are both far more viable captures. Yep. And Ukraine and Seth. So like <laughs> Romania and Bulgaria both lost. They were both invincible, and now they're both potentially exposed. And Italy seems to be giving up uh, Greece to you in the meantime. So you're like, <laughs> okay, I can take a lot here potentially. Uh. We'll have to see. Is there anything else you want to talk about on this board? I just want to see if France survives. Yeah, I, I'm rooting hard for that Mid-Atlantic Ocean fleet. It's like, come on. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe Italy's gonna be nice and let it live somewhere, but I, I doubt it. We'll see whether this war is enough to keep France alive. Let's move into fall 1946. Well, um, Germany decides they don't want France to die. Yes, this war was enough to keep France alive. <laughs> it was, yes, it and was. on two centers. Nice. Uh, yeah, the, the Russian and the German are now going fully against each other, um, and they both want the smaller powers on their side. Uh, the... Although France France doesn't trust the German, cutting Wales here, um, tapping English Channel instead of taking the support into Irish Sea, um, and then instead of retreating into North Atlantic Ocean, when they get dislodged from Mid Atlantic Ocean, they go to Western Med. Oh boy, Southern Janissary units. I wonder if any of the northern powers are going to use that, try and keep France alive specifically to harass the Italian, now that the Italian looks quite strong. They've moved into Adriatic, Venice, Tyrolia, setting up for this attack on the Austrian. Austria's getting a build, but with the, with the Italian in mid-Atlantic Ocean now as well, this looks like they're starting to become a little dangerous. But 
But not too dangerous, because they only have two armies. <laughs> That's true. That does limit their power a bit, but their two armies are in the most important locations for their two armies to be right now, um, which is completely on the Austrian front. Uh, they they need another build so that they can convoy units into Albania or something. Um, what do they take off? They're losing Greece. Aegean, I guess? Maybe Spain, South Coast. Oh, that makes sense. Or North Africa, actually, because you can just use Ionian to cover Tunis. Um, one of the two. Yeah, but I just want to use Ionian to do other things, like Greece. Mm. But yeah, here, so now the uh, the dynamics totally changed. We've got an, uh, a Germany against Russia war here, um, and Italy keeping their armies out of Marseille area it seems to indicate they're on Germany's side. Um... At least to some degree. It looks like Russia doesn't... Well, Russia's taking the Austrian side in this uh, conflict in the south. So I guess those are the two alliances that are shake shaping up right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Germany, Italy versus Austria, Russia. With France... Both sides trying to keep France on side and France just sort of doing their own thing. Trying to survive. I'm really interested to see where this unit in Western Med goes. <laughs> Maybe it goes on a trip back to Syria again. That seems a little difficult from this position, but... Uh, I would be shocked. It could absolutely be possible that it gets janissaried by someone who in the north who keeps uh, Liverpool intact or something, um, so that it can be used against Italy. Uh, that could happen. It's just Italy's got, like, five fleets... With that, have nothing to do except chase down this one fleet, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, like, at that point, it probably does die. Yeah, especially if it goes somewhere like Tunis, that's easy to predict and easy to to uh, to surround. Um, but yes. So, uh, is there anything I've missed? Unit gets popped in Bohemia. Um, that's a nice win for the Russians and Austrians, but it's... Well, it's a small win, but it's a nice one. <laughs> uh, getting rid of that unit there. Um, if it was a spring, it would be a much bigger deal. But it's fall, so it just gets rebuilt in Kiel anyways. It does, yes. But it not being in Bohemia is quite nice for the Austrian, at the very least. Um, especially given the surrounding tactic that the Italian has gone for on Trieste. Uh, yes, Bohemia would have added a bunch of potency to this attack on Trieste. Assuming that uh, Germany actually wants Italy to make progress against Austria, which I don't know that it does, but we'll see what happens here. Uh, let's go to the winter. So, winter 1946. Adriatic comes off the board. That's an interesting one. So, Italy may be going, okay, Austria, I'm... <laughs> You know, I know I just rotated against you, but I, as a sign of goodwill, I'm going to take off this unit. Try and get back into your good books again. Yep, I believe it. <laughs> right, so... Uh, so, Army Kiel. I might have gone with the fleet here. Um, I mean, Army makes sense. In that you, well, I can't. I, I definitely want to send a unit into Scandinavia here. I think whatever Kiel, you know, whatever you build in Kiel, has to go to Scandinavia with these Russian fleets uh, up here. So surely you just want that to be a fleet. Uh, army going up there doesn't seem to help you a ton. Yeah, if you're defending Scandinavia, you want a fleet. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do with Kiel. Yes, uh, so, like, I think Kiel goes north here, um, you, you do want to protect Scandinavia, at the moment you've only got Skagerrak doing that, and Skagerrak isn't enough against North Sea, Norway, and potentially St. Petersburg, um, and Fleet Press is honestly fairly useless. <laughs> it's, uh, it's good for helping, uh, defend against the Italian, but the Italian's on your side, so, uh, that's... Not ideal. I would expect to see Brest go to English Channel and English Channel go to Belgium. I think so too. 
um, or get supported, double supported up into London maybe, but you know, Belgium probably makes more sense there. Um, uh, Germany has two armies in the in the UK. They can two armies in the UK is enough to sweep the UK if you need to. <laughs> uh, so um, Actually, but I think Germany's going to try to convince France to use Fleet London to help against the North Sea. Hmm. They were already so. trying to get France on side in the last turn, right? They left uh, Liverpool intact for that reason. So I think, yeah, yeah. there is a good chance of that. Um, I, would, I would be expecting Germany to do something like Yorkshire support Wales to Liverpool, and then Yorkshire support Liverpool to Edinburgh. That's a way sense. to take Edinburgh from the Russian. Yeah, while well, keeping the French units intact and the French on side, this uh, fleet in London could be huge. Um, just one extra fleet in the north is really important now that it's like 3v3 up here. Exactly. Um, that fourth fleet is the difference maker. And also, this Italian fleet in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean might choose to be on the German side. And if that fleet gets to the north, which I'm sure Italy would love, it can, it can matter. It, it really can, with this few on the board. Uh, well, there's few on the board, there's a ton in the south, but they're all, uh... Yeah, the, the, in the north there are only six fleets right now, if you don't count Middle Atlantic Ocean. Uh, sorry, seven count fleets. Middle Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> but yeah, um, so we're in a power rankings year. Um, I mean, France is still bottom, even if they are surviving here. Two dots yeah. speaks for itself. Uh, Austria's managed to claw back a little bit, but still second to last, there's no real they could potentially make a stab against the uh, Russian here, but it doesn't seem like they'll gain very much out of it are uh, they higher than Germany or Russia or Italy? Like, no, no way not right. in the slightest Their position is okay, but it's not, not nearly as stable as any of the other ones yep, and then who comes next? This is the interesting question, is I it still Italy is higher than Germany hmm it's an interesting question here, um, because I I see Germany has a lot of growth potential in the UK, yeah, if they want it, and yes. Italy has a fleet behind their lines to deal with, they don't have any immediate enemies, which is a great thing for them, but I don't think they have any immediate expansion either. Um, I agree, but I believe this game is about who's gonna, who's most likely to survive the draw, right, and like, frankly... It looks pretty likely this is going to be a four-way draw with everyone except France, right? That's just like that's where I would expect this game to go, mm. right? <laughs> um, and if it's anything but that, then who gets eliminated next, right? And yeah. my assumption would be that that Germany would get eliminated, not Italy, because Italy has a safer position at the moment. That's how I look at it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I think I'm good to put Italy above Germany then, but do you, so you still think Russia is first in this position? Yeah. Even with the potential Austrian taking Romania and Bulgaria kind of deal? Yeah. Can't we expand on that, or is it yeah, <laughs> what can it get? I mean, they have 11 centers, right? And they have the advantage currently in the north, right? Their fleets in Norway and North Sea are better positioned than German's fleets in English Channel and Brest, right? So, like, Skagrak and Norway are both equivalent, in my mind, and North Sea is way better than English Channel in this war. So, as Norway just supports Old North Sea for a bit, St. Petersburg gets to Finland, which can start messing with Skagrak, and they're the one in Prussia, and nobody's in Silesia, so they're yeah. fine. Austria moved away from their borders into Bohemia so they're probably okay. Galicia might be able to move back. Armenia can go to Sev. Like, I think Russia is not in danger of losing anything for a, a bit to anyone except Austria who appeared to be on side because the IG could kill Austria and Austria recognizes that so yeah, I just think that Russia is, like, the only liability for Russia is that they have two units in the south defending those three centers, but, like, that's fine. Yeah, they can probably accomplish diplomatically what they lack in unit strength down there. Yeah, 
Uh, Alright, I have put that as our power rankings then. Russia is currently in first, Italy second, Germany third, Austria in fourth, and France hanging on there on two supply centers in fifth. Um, let's go ahead to spring 47. And Very cool. Hmm. So what do you want to talk about first here? Um, first, let's just talk about Italy real quick. Italy is trying to corral the French fleet, which looks like it wants to get back into Marseille. <laughs> Marseille feels like the wrong place to go here. Um, well, it is a home center for France, right? It is, but then how do you build? You how don't do you ever build. It? Yeah, this is... Yeah. Um, I suppose you, like... If they had gone to Tunis here, they would have been knocked out of Tunis and and yeah, is forced to span it. Okay. Uh, they they might not have made it to Ionian if Aegean came back and if Mid Atlantic Ocean came back, they could have just been forced here and died. Um sure. so... Italy could have used all of their units to do it. Reasonable. Whereas <laughs> hopefully they're not gonna get popped this turn. Yeah. I'm like, again, if they wanna hold the line, right? They wanna be in Marseille and then start rebuilding eventually and that is like the best long-term position they could hope for i just feel like that's not going to work <laughs> oh, really? uh, if you want to like hmm i wonder if they should have asked for assistance back into middle atlantic ocean here because if you want to survive this game you probably want oh, to get back people. into brest instead yeah or portugal yeah. <laughs> Um, or Portugal, but better to Portugal, right? Yes, uh, and I don't know how willing the Northern Powers would be to support you into Middle Atlantic Ocean when you're annoying the Italians so well right now. Um, yeah, I think we're pretty okay with this. So, uh, yeah, the other thing the Italian does support holds Venice, um, defending itself against this Austrian attack, and the Austrian does seem to have committed. Tyrolia. Sorry, supports hold Tyrolia. Defending against this Austrian attack and uh, seems to have committed. The Austrian seems to have committed to this Russian alliance fully now. Um, moving into Trieste here, preparing for the attack, despite Adriatic being taken off the board. But it's still hard to make progress there with just armies. <laughs> yes, because even if you take Tyrolia, Piedmont support holds Venice, and that doesn't get broken for a long time. Yep, or and like, long time ever. read ever with <laughs> You need that French fleet to come assist you, uh, but it needs to get past Tyrrhenian Sea. It can't tap It can't tap Piedmont! <laughs> when it goes into Marseille and you're in Tyrolia, you just say tap Piedmont. Okay. Oh my soul. Please tap Piedmont. I love you. <laughs> France, you're the sexiest man alive. Please. <laughs> Please. Please, but whatever. The... Okay, as for the rest, we see the German did what I was hoping in Wales and Yorkshire, supporting into Liverpool, presumably going after Edinburgh. And yep. it looks like Russia asked France to take the North Sea from London. It seems right? that way. But supporting that, and so English Channel then hoped to waltz back in behind the fleet. Right? But, but France, France was France not. Just held. <laughs> And then it was just like, okay. Yeah, which... Um, is that the right yeah. move from France here? Probably not, given that Yorkshire can now kill him. But Yorkshire probably wants to just take Edinburgh instead. Um, the Putting the fleet into the North Sea. North Sea is useful in that it can go to a variety of different provinces. But I think in this case, you're not actually getting into any of those provinces. Um, yeah, I think London is better than the North Sea right now for France, in this particular position. Yeah, so France probably makes the right move um, on that front. And yep. Brest goes to Picardy to cover Belgium anyway, so... Exactly. In the meantime, Russia has a great time ending up in Denmark, while Skagerrak goes to the North Sea, which Russia doesn't really care about, because they were losing Edinburgh anyways, and Finland now has a free walk into Sweden. Yeah. And they got into Silesia. So Russia is just very happy with this progress in the war against France. Honestly, Russia might be too successful because now Austria might decide they need to stop Russia from soloing. 
Yeah, and right now Austria can still take Bulgaria with Italian assistance if Italy cuts Constantinople. Um, yes, which seems plausible. Yep. Uh, like, the German moves here if, at their home look a little weird in defensive purposes, but then you look at it and you see, oh, hang on, they couldn't have held Cilicia anyway um, against this. So I guess they're trying to... Like, Berlin hold is just... Yeah. Maybe I'm going to give a peace offering or something in that form, but it's it's just doing nothing with a unit that would have done nothing anyway. Yep. Um, you need an unit in Berlin. Yeah. So, like, a very, very good turn for Russia, and not a really good turn for anyone else. Yep. That seems to be the, uh, the way of things have gone. Germany obviously going to pick up a lot in the UK, but... Maybe uh, too good for Russia. Oh, do you think that Germany's going to take from... Yorkshire? I was assuming Germany would take Edinburgh from Liverpool. I, I mean, I feel like if you're losing Denmark, Sweden, you've got to take two, right? Um, Maybe. If taking that two means that France disbands London, then maybe not. I mean, you're, you're, I think you're fine with France disbanding London if you get it. <laughs> uh, it London's obviously really useful for you if you can get it to work with you, but is France going to work with you is the question. It held here. It could have done something like supported you into North Sea or uh, actively chosen a side, um, but it has not done that. That's true. I like dots. Dots are good. Dots, uh, yeah. Taking dots is not is usually not a bad decision. <laughs> it, it can be a very bad, bad decision, but generally, yeah, yeah, yeah. In general, take your dots. Yep. Uh, so pretty much everything talks about here. Shall we go to the fall? Let's see it. Okay, fall nineteen forty seven, uh, and Germany self bounces in Edinburgh. That's what? Sorry. That's a misorder. That's got to be a misorder, right? Guaranteed. Yeah. Oof. Absolutely. No. 100% misorder. Uh, why is Germany pulling back from Berlin? Oh, okay, no, they're pulling back from Berlin because they were losing it anyway. Um, with the, Denmark. With Denmark tapping Kiel and Bohemia tapping Munich. So they just wanted to preserve this unit, which is actually really important here because Germany is pinned in their home supply centers. If they lose a unit, they can't rebuild it. Uh... Yep. Um, but yeah, this this was quite important to take up here. No, it, it ends up not being as important, I think. Um, because they lose Berlin, they lose Sweden. Oh, no, they, they should have taken it, they're going minus one. Okay. <laughs> plus Liverpool, plus um, minus Sweden? Minus yeah, Berlin. Minus Berlin as well, yeah. So minus one overall. Uh, they do manage to dislodge Denmark, um, but in yeah, Baltic, that's like, still painful. Russia to be building, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and but Russia lost Bur 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 uh, Bulgaria. They did. The real um, winner is Austria, who builds a fleet in Trieste. <laughs> oh boy, we see a we're gonna see potentially a southern fleet that isn't French, or no, that isn't. Italian, even. <laughs> or French. Yeah. Or French, yep. Knows it. It's the first um, one in a long time. Fleet Con doesn't count. And, uh... France is getting corralled right now. They knew they couldn't go to Marseille. They knew they couldn't go to Spain. Uh, they had a choice of Piedmont or Tuscany. Tuscany seems like the right decision there. But it seems like it's a dead sentence. going off the board. I think this fleet has seen its last day. Yeah. You keep London here every time, right? <laughs> Um, Tuscany, yes. <laughs> and uh, London decides to support Irish Sea to English Channel, so France is still taking uh, Russia's side in this war. Maybe just because they knew that Germany was going to take uh, take Liverpool and such. Um, but I mean, also maybe, um, maybe just because uh, Russia, you wanted one of Russia in, and Germany in each of North Sea and at English Channel so they can't support the other against you. Uh, but That's reasonable. Yeah, it, um, Russia doesn't go there. Russia tries to take Liverpool behind Germany in case Germany goes in from Liverpool. <laughs> Man, the self bounce in Edinburgh is just so painful. That's, uh... Yeah, it's really bad for Germany. Gives Russia a free build. 
forces you to disband, like, oof. Yep. Um, and Italy's just sort of sitting here corralling the French fleet. Uh, they won't need to do that anymore after this turn, so we'll have to see where they go. Um, well, there's going to be an Austrian fleet to contend with now, I'm sure. There is. Uh, it should be noted that five Italian fleets probably outweighs one Austrian one, <laughs> but it is it is significant that there is an Austrian fleet on coming onto the board here. Yeah, um, but it, it is something to corral, right? Something you have to mess with. You can't let it get into Ionian, so you gotta bottle it up there pretty hard. And if it gets to Ionian, then like Khan might do something. What if Russia builds Fleet Sev also to go with it? Oh boy, then Italy oh, has okay. some troubles. Yeah. Um. Okay. And like, Fleet Sev is remarkably reasonable because you want to get the Black Sea. Yep. Uh, so it looks like what's happening on this board, Russia gets a lot of builds here. Austria obviously takes one of them. Um, to, wait, Russia, yeah, Russia gets one, one. one build. Um, yeah. and Russia was plus two, but then they lost Bulgaria, so... Yep. Uh, but this Italy, Germany can just hold a, a kind of stalemate-ish position. Um, on this line, if they just stand here, I think. Uh, well, Germany will lose stuff in the north, but it's going to be yeah, slow. Yeah, because of those fleets, those Russian fleets mean there's no real stalemate. And yeah. because Russia has decided making progress against Germany, and Russia's already at eleven, before the plus, before the uh, adjustments, I think Austria is going to need to do significant damage against the Russian. I don't think Bulgaria is enough. Hmm. Yeah, but he's got time, right? He doesn't have to make the moves just yet, but he's gonna have to make them relatively soon. Yep. Uh, so, is there much else to talk about here? Now nah, let's see him. Let's go ahead to the builds in 1947. Oh Fleet, <laughs> Fleet London comes off. Well, all right. It's like. Maybe the French player knew that that was the fleet that had been to Barents in the Eastern Mediterranean. He's like, no, this fleet lives till the end. I'm not getting yeah. rid of it. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's no other choice, right? Italy's just going to pop it? Yeah, it, it just dies here. Because the Lyon supports Tyrrhenian, or, or Tyrrhenian supports Lyon into there, and then you cover Piedmont, Rome, it's gone. Um, but that well, does delay the Italian. Too, right? It's... It's not trivial, right? I don't think you can pop it in the spring. Uh, no, 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 because uh, Tyrrhenian and Lyon um, attack it together, and then you can cover Piedmont and Rome if you want to with Venice and, and Marseille, but yes, with the right. Austrian right. fleet in Trieste, this is delaying the Italian for one turn, and that one turn could be what the Austrian needs to get position on Venice, especially if uh, the the Italian moves Venice to Rome. Um <laughs> Because then you're leaving Tyrolia open to attack. So yeah, it, it does actually work as a screw you Italy move, <laughs> which yeah. And I think I think Italy does need to kill Tunis because if Tunis is around, it can cut Piedmont and cut Rome and stuff. So I don't, get, can, yeah. I don't think you can tolerate it. Yeah, uh, we'll see what happens there. Picardy coming off the board is totally reasonable. That unit is not yeah, very the useful. Best. Russia um, built fleet Saint Pete North Coast. They did. I can't help but think that Fleet Sevastopol would have been better, uh, given this Austrian fleet coming on the board, just trying maximum to... Maximum pressure on Turkey? Or on Italy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is putting maximum pressure on Germany, and is. he is more at war with Germany than he is with with Austria. So with Italy, I yeah, believe yeah. It, it... To commit everything to the north... I think this is totally reasonable. I wouldn't. I probably would have. I don't know. Fleet Sav feels really bad though, because like, it's telling Austria, "Look, Austria, I want Bulgaria back. You're gonna give me Bulgaria," and like Austria's in Greece, and so once you get into Aegean as Russia, where do you go next? Well, do you take Bulgaria? Do you take Greece? Like, that's a good way to Austria yeah. stop helping you against Germany. That's fair. Okay. Um... But yeah, so uh, what else have we got here Another thing to talk about? I, I mean, Fleet St. Petersburg is probably going to go, what, Barents, Norwegian, something? Or it will probably go into to Norway, Norway and then Norway goes Norwegian. to Norwegian. Yeah, that makes more sense. 
um, get position on North Sea. Russia's probably resigned to losing Edinburgh this turn, uh, but they can figure out a unit to disband, I'm sure. They've got plenty. Yeah, and with Norway in Norwegian and Irish Sea, in the Irish Sea, Irish Sea can tap Liverpool, and then they would need to take Edinburgh from Yorkshire instead, which means they don't take London. Oh, and English can take London. English can yeah, take okay. London, but uh, that leaves nothing defending Brest if Irish Sea goes to English. Goes to English instead. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's reasonable, right? So, like, Russia is probably losing Norwegian, but, like, is guaranteed to take Denmark, right? Yep. Berlin cuts Kiel, Baltic support, Sweden to Denmark. And then there's three on Kiel, so suddenly Germany has to guess to hold Munich or Kiel. Yep. Or not quite, no, because it's an Italian army in Tyrolia at the moment. It's not quite a guess. We'll see what it is in the spring. Yeah. But currently they could hold Kiel and Munich. I, I think, yeah, right. Russia can make progress here, but it's going to be slow. Um, it's going to be late. I think it's not still, I guess, even with the Italian army in Tyrolia. Because Russia could go after Munich with three, or Kiel with with three. Yep. Right, what does Berlin do? Relies on Austrian assistance, right. but that's totally reasonable right now. Um, yes, that's totally plausible. So, shall we go into 48? Uh, let's, let's see it. Let's see the spring. Alright. Spring 1948. Um, and Germany actually just leaves the French unit alive here. Uh, it goes to North Sea instead and moves Yorkshire to Liverpool, which the Russian doesn't contest. So, if he takes uh, London, it's going to have to be with North Sea, which you don't really want to do. So... I could see uh, France surviving another turn here, although... Um, a zero unit survive, yeah? Yeah. I, I don't like these Italian moves. I think they should have blown up the fleet here if they were going to Rome and Piedmont anyway. Um, yes. They could have absolutely have done it. Uh, so... Yeah, I agree. They're fine with one of these units getting bounced, right? If Tuscany moves to Rome or Piedmont then whatever, it's fine. But you're still going to need to keep in Gulf of Leon and Turinian Sea in the, for in the spring, or in the fall anyways, as you pop the unit. So, yeah, I think it's just wasted a turn, basically. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. And you kind of need those units to oh be God. back as Wait, quickly as is... possible. Yeah, if, if France cuts Rome, then... Austria is guaranteed to walk into Venice. <laughs> they are. Well, uh, yeah, they are, because um, Bohemia can t tap uh, Tyrolia. Yeah, here. Vienna taps Tyrolia. Sorry, here. Vienna taps Tyrolia. Oh, no, I take it back. The GM can tap Adriatic. Yeah, the I mean, taps yep. Adriatic, and t Tyrolia taps Trieste, and then Rome goes to Venice. So, yes. But if you tap Tusk, but if you do that, and Austria doesn't go after Venice... And you try to kick out the Spanish fleet in Tuscany, <laughs> then you can retreat to Rome. That's beautiful. Oh boy. And if you cover Rome, he retreats to the Trinian Sea, and if they don't take London, he's still around. I... I'm not popping in the spring. Italy might have missed the opportunity. And this means this French fleet might survive another day. <laughs> wow. It might survive another year. Yeah. This is, uh, this is important. Like, this is considering this is one fleet right here it's having a huge impact right now um, it is neutralizing all of Italy's units and is still going to probably give Austria a center <laughs> okay um, so yes uh, things to talk about in the north here as well um, the German going for a uh, the gas that protects uh, Munich and potentially protects Kiel, just cussing Berlin to make sure that if Baltic goes to Kiel, it doesn't go through. Um, but yes. Russia just goes for the obvious, uh, takes Denmark here with the uh, guaranteed cut on Kiel. Yeah, and Russia went for taking Denmark with the fleet rather than with the army from Sweden. This puts the maximum pressure onto the North Sea. There are now three fleets on North Sea, but it doesn't maximize pressure on Kiel. And here, as Russia, I would be really tempted to just go for the builds and the dots and try to take Kiel and just keep pressing. Yep. Um, but I think the North Sea is totally reasonable territory to take. You're not going to see me arguing about it. 
Yeah, I think that this North Sea, this uh, Russian attack is very focused on getting back to the uh, English mainland, uh, the British mainland. Yeah. It's really um, sad to see Irish Sea bounce Mid Atlantic Ocean rather than go to English Channel. Yep. Uh, As Russia, I would have loved for it to be in English Channel. English Channel would be so much better, especially considering also the Italian would be in Mid Atlantic Ocean. The German would have to essentially ask the Italian to cover Brest for them, and then you just don't go to Brest and, and let that happen. Yeah, you can go uh, for London yep. or Belgium, right? You have this guess against the North Sea with your one unit, and like. What's he gonna do, right? He's gotta, he's gotta guess well. Yeah, it feels like, uh, yeah, that that would have been far better for the Russian here. Um, yeah, and like I would have liked if that if that is is on itself, that would have been much better by itself. If you combine it with taking Denmark from Sweden, right? If you're an English Channel, North Sea still has to move to London or Belgium, right, to cover those. Otherwise, Munich falls and such so north sea can't be support held so norway and norwegian can take north sea by itself and then you can use sweden to help you take kiel anyways yes right? although with the austrian unit backing out of bohemia it's harder to make progress against the german mainland that might be the reasoning yes. here um so yeah but like you don't necessarily know this is all happening Right, this Austria's is... probably not going to tell everyone. Hey, here's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah, the um, so uh, one interesting thing here, the last thing I want to talk about in this phase, unless you've got anything as well, is um, Greece to Serbia, uh, leaving Greece open. Obviously, it's not leaving Greece under threat in any way because you can always use Albania and Bulgaria to kick this, uh, and Serbia to kick this Italian unit out if it goes there. Um, but it just gives a little extra pressure, I guess, against the uh, Italian. It might also represent a tad, uh, a little bit of distrust towards the Russian, um, just in case the Russian goes to Budapest or Serbia or something behind the Austrians' back here. Um, yep, yeah, there's a potential risk for that. And, I mean, Serbia is just a more useful place for an army than Greece most of the time. Yep. Like, the army in Greece can't do anything that the army in Serbia can't except be convoyed. Yep, which okay. is probably not going to happen here. Um, so. so, yeah. Uh, shall we move on to fall? Let's see if France stays alive. Alright, fall 1948. And that's a dead French. No, it's not a dead French unit. Oh, it is a dead French unit, you know, because the German oh, retreats into well, London. Gets retreated to, so. Oh, no! <laughs> that's the one that's been to Paris and Eastern Mediterranean, now all the way back to, to Tuscany again. Um, yeah. But its final resting it place. To, up to Barents, down to Eastern Med, up to Norwegian Sea, down to Tuscany. Yep, and its final resting place is going to be in the Gulf of Lyon here. Um, so close to home. But not quite able to make it. Oh, <laughs> uh, the the Austrian could have taken Venice here, um, but they decided not to. They just went uh, for a supported attack into T Tyrolia from Trieste instead, which is odd. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really give. Um, they still don't have more pressure on Venice. Right. Yeah. And Italy now got into Apulia and can use Tyrrhenian Sea to cover Ionian. I don't know. I don't think Austria can crack this Italian anymore. I don't think so I either. Think that, that was the turn. Piedmont, sorry? That was the turn they needed to do it. Uh, to... Yeah, because now Piedmont supports Tuscany to Venice, right, which will bounce, guaranteed. And then. You can have Ionian support Tyrrhenian Sea, or er, er, Apulia support Tyrrhenian Sea to Ionian Sea. And then when Austria gets his army into Trieste, you then have Apulia support Tuscany to Venice, Piedmont support Tuscany to Venice, Gulf of Leon supports Marseille, and you have a line, right? Yep. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. You need to get Western Med down into... Western Med needs to get into 
Tunis also in the in the spring because Russia has a fleet in Aegean and that fleet in Aegean could coordinate with the Austrian fleet in Adriatic to to mess with um, to mess with your line yes uh, this is true but certainly the Austrian uh, position against the Italian would have been far better if they'd just gone into Venice it, it doesn't Taking Tyrolia makes sense if you're just going to go all out against the German. I don't think it makes sense against the uh, the Italian here. Um, maybe that is their intention. Maybe they're just going to join the Russian on a jolly old trip to Germany um, and try and take Munich. But feels a bit short-sighted because I don't think they get any further than that. Uh, yeah. Um... Germany did go for the guaranteed take on London here. Uh, they convoyed Edinburgh down to London, knowing full well that if they get dislodged from North Sea, uh, they could just retreat to London instead. Um, that ends up being a fine move. Uh, takes off the French units, of course, which is very sad to see. Um, but it also means the German is going to go plus one here, I think. And they can't actually build that unit, so... That's a little uh, painful to killing the French unit for no apparent gain. Well, it, the gain for them is they help their ally, the Italian, out. Yeah. Um, so now Italy can use Mid Atlantic Ocean, presumably in the north, to help you, and you kind of need the help. You do, because now that uh, Russian fleet actually is in the English Channel and adjacent to Brest, which you've got nothing defending. So, yeah, and Peter Mar Marseille can now move into Spain's south coast and then head north, while Italy holds in the south with whatever their two armies and three fleets. Yep. Uh, yeah, that leaves two units to go around to the north. Great. Okay. Um, so being disappointed here that, that Trieste didn't go to Venice, but uh, that, that's kind of the only disappointment in this phase. Albania down to Greece shows, I think, well, that... that uh, one second... Um, Sorry, it, it is quite important, actually, that Austria took Tyrolia from Trieste instead of from Vienna. Because oh if Austria had taken Tyrolia from Vienna instead, then Italy has a risk of a three-strength attack against Venice, and also a risk of a two-strength attack against Ionian. Mm. Right. And that is no longer a threat this next turn. And Italy has just enough units to hold against this Russian this Russian threat by using only two against Venice, and then they can commit two to Ionian as well in the spring, and in the fall they've got an extra unit to commit against Ionian, and so they can commit three against Venice and two against Ionian and just hold forever. So the taking from Vienna would have given Austria an extra guess to break the line at least a little bit. Yes. Um, so they just... I don't understand why they took from Trieste in the first place. Just seems suboptimal. Um, but hey, that's their decision on this. Um, I guess may maybe they were trying to get the Italian back on side or something, but mm, mm, I, I think at this point we just ask the Austrian player Goldfinger to comment below uh, <laughs> why yeah, you went in this direction. Good, yep. Thank you, Goldfinger, by the way, for all your comments. They've been great. <laughs> they help us not read the game press um, and still figure out what's going on. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, shall we move ahead to the winter here? Sure. Are there adjustments? Um, I think there are, because Denmark... Yeah, uh, no, because... Yes, Denmark was taken, but then Edinburgh was lost. Okay, no, there aren't, I think. Well, I'm okay, the French, French disband, right? Yes, French disband. Okay, let's go ahead and see that. No, he took it. Oh. Wait, what? It was the last one, so I guess it didn't show it. It didn't show it. It didn't, didn't even show one. this This unit. It should have had its own commemorative funeral phase. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I did flash up the turn results there for a second, but we actually do need to do power rankings first. Um, Before we see the next turn results? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh... France. Anyways, uh, Russia's first, Germany's second, Italy's third, Austria's fourth. I think, well, mm, Germany, I'm not sure, is above Italy here. Uh, I feel like they're, like, Italy with this Austrian order set has a much more secure position than Germany does. Um, 
Yeah, that's fair. Fleet English Channel is more annoying for Germany. Yep. Uh, Austria's definitely lost, and I think Russia's definitely first. Okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll concede that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Let's switch Let's switch Germany and Italy. Italy is about Germany. I agree. Okay. Well, these power rankings are getting a bit sparse because we're going to have to say goodbye to T. Broadley, our, uh, our French player, after pretty epic expedition back and forth an amazing start um and then a fall and then an amazing recovery and then another fall and then this yeah <laughs> it's yeah, just if there were just a few i feel like if he had like three fewer nmrs he would have survived yeah at this point but... yeah just too much he was yes um and I mean that's how things can change in diplomacy. If you get too far ahead, uh, people will gang up on you, and in extreme cases, it can lead to this. Um, so okay, this was also because he explicitly let people take stuff from him, right? Because of the weird tournament scoring setup. Yes. Because he had a stalemate line back in like 1912 or something, right? He could have just said, you know what, guys, we'll take a draw. It's fine. I got stalemated. That's okay. Yes. He but he let the Instead, game go he on. he was like, no, I'm going to play for the win because my team needs a win, and, like, I respect that a lot. Yep. But it did risk his elimination. Yep. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, that's exactly what ended up happening. So, yes, massive respect to Team Broadly for playing it out to 48. Uh, but now we are down to four. Just four powers left. Uh, Russia currently in first place by our standings. Um, Italy in second, Germany in third, and then Austria bringing up the rear in fourth, although none of them are in particularly terrible positions right now. Um, no, they're all looking quite quite reasonable. I could, I think, like, yeah. <laughs> if it was a different setting, I would, I would expect them to just agree to a four-way draw right here. Yeah. I would, I've played tons of games where Russia says, the only way I get a better result than this is if I go for a solo, but that risks my own elimination because I'm Russia with no stalemate lines to keep me safe, and if Austria decides to turn against me, then maybe I get eliminated. I could, and then they vote draw. Yep. That said, this is a weird tournament situation where they all need a solo, so they can't end yet. Yep. So, and we we so know we've got a while left. Um... 50 more years. <laughs> Yep. Let's go ahead to spring 1949 uh, here, and we just see a lot more maneuvering. Um, as you you correctly predicted, the Italian would defend themselves, um, and they do. Uh, in the south, that's kind of all there is to talk about, apart from Vienna to Budapest, uh, which is yeah. very... Well, also Germany gets back Berlin. Yes, so uh, I'm saying in the south, uh, all there is oh, to talk about is south. Vienna to Budapest. Yeah, a bunch of bounces, western meant to Tunis is the relevant move, and then, yeah, Marseille to Spain. And Vienna to Budapest, <laughs> which could have gone to Bohemia um, to help against the German here, but clearly doesn't trust the Russian and or is attempting to get position on Romania, which he successfully has gotten with this move. Um, we'll have to see whether he makes anything of it. Uh, but yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead about the north. Um... Yeah, well, we saw that the moves that the Russian ordered let Germany take and disband Berlin, which is crushing to the Russians' hope of progressing in this war. Um, Russia was just being very greedy here, very, very greedy, because Russia could have support-held Berlin, or attacked Berlin, or attacked Munich from Berlin while vacating Prussia, so if this happened, he could retreat. I would have expected something like Silesia to Bohemia or whatever, right? Like, maybe get Austria into Bohemia, but just not risking get letting Berlin get disbanded while you're getting positioned in Helgoland and Denmark. Because if they still have Berlin, when they're in Helgoland and Denmark, and then suddenly Kiel is at risk. Right, this is this is a line that you can make progress on. I'm not even sure that Russia can retake Berlin this turn. Yeah, and like, what were they trying to gain here? It feels like Burgundy's 
Well, maybe they're Burgundy. They're saying that either Burgundy supports Hold Munich or it covers Belgium, so you get one of the two. But Belgium is not very valuable, all things considered here. Um, it's a fleet in Belgium. It doesn't pressure very much. English Channel almost pressures more. Um, yeah, this could cut Holland, I suppose. Yeah, that's the thing it can do. Kiel. You cut Munich, Berlin, Holland, go to Kiel with two, but then we can support Kiel still. Yeah, it just feels Berlin like... Kiel, Munich supports Berlin, and Burgundy cuts Belgium. So... Russia just... Yeah, Germany stabilized and got their home centers back. Yeah, Berlin here moving just feels like a mistake. It would have been best to hold that unit. Um, and yeah, it, by a lot. Yeah. That's just... It Good news for the Russian, though. The German and Italian miscoordinated and double-tapped the English Channel. Yep. I'm certain that Germany would have much preferred Italy making his way into English Channel and then being supported into Belgium or something else. But this is this is very good news here for, for Italy and Germany, basically, because they can hold this line against Russia for only another year or two, and these two Italian fleets are going to be the difference in the north. Yep. This is true. Um, but I think the Russian is still going to be too slow here with the with Berlin disbanded. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And honestly, this is just giving Italy a better position at this point because they can just stab for those German dots after this war ends. Um, if it does end. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, Italy doesn't need a solo, right? Italy just needs a draw. Yep. So, I mean, I would expect Italy to try to balance this war as much as possible, right? Keep them stalemated as best as you can, and then just say, oops. Yep. And uh, Italy has a solid position in its homeland now as well, um, with three fleets on Ionian. There's no way that's getting broken. Uh, so, yeah. Um, actually... Okay, so Serbia is now in Trieste. Uh, that can support. Um, the, so there can be three units attacking Venice, so Apulia yep. needs to hold Venice, but then you've still got two units on Ionian, so you're fine either way. Um, yep. Yeah. So that's pretty much everything here. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead to fall of 1949 then. Um, and... <laughs> I misread the board on the previous turn. Okay. I I thought there was still an army in Ruhr, but there was not. So yeah, Germany was able to, or Russia was able to force Kiel. He was, um, and Germany, uh, to to his credit, he had just said, yeah, sure, have Kiel. I'm gonna take uh, Belgium back, and Belgium doesn't and... bother retreating. Yeah, not to English Channel. That's shocking, and. Russia also took Kiel the guaranteed way, rather than going after it from Denmark, which again would have been more punishing here, yep. by quite substantially. But I think the reason that Belgium comes off the board is what we see in the south here. The uh, Austrian completely reversing, going to Vienna, Bohemia, starting to move back round, and forcing Romania. Uh, the Russian tapping Bulgaria, to keep him honest, actually saves the Russian uh, supply center. Um, which ends up being important. It keeps it, I think it gives them a build due to the disbanded unit in Berlin. Um, Earlier this year, and now the disband in Belgium. I believe that's accurate. Yes. Uh, oh, plus Kiel. Are they... Plus no, Kiel, oh, minus Berlin, Berlin, plus Romania, minus Bulgaria. Uh, so they're actually break-even on that, but they have disbanded two units, so I think they're building two. Um... So, yeah, that, that's going to be an interesting one. The, the Austrian choosing to go after Romania here, well, the, the Russian protecting Romania pays off hugely uh, by yes. making sure that they take Bulgaria back. Um, also, yeah, position I Austria, I like this play from Austria. I think um, he, if this, right, they were stalemated in the south, right? He could not make any gains against Italy here. Right, this is that is that is true, and if Austria needs a solo to advance for his team, then he needs more chaos on this board for a long time. 
Yep. He needs he needs to make gains against Russia, let Russia get weakened, hope that Italy gets into good position against Germany. Italy stabs Germany somehow, and then you can stab Italy and go for the solo that way. Yeah. Right. That's like that's a line to a solo from here for Austria. Whereas just throwing himself at Italy, getting stalemated with the, letting Russia commit only a few units to the south while they have this war in the north, like it's unlikely that whoever wins the north doesn't hold the stalemate line afterwards. So I, I think this is a, a probably a really good play from Austria. Yep. Even if uh, Russia's protections do make it somewhat less effective. Um... Absolutely. Yeah. You so, just, just gotta make some decisions. Yeah, and uh, like taking Belgium off the board gives Russia the build back home he needs. This is uh, the, the, yeah. I think that likely retreats to English Channel if Austria doesn't stab here, which means that maybe the Austrian did choose the wrong face to stab. Um, specifically, yes. like <laughs> Constantinople yeah. taking Bulgaria is the problem. <laughs> Yeah, if he could have done it next in one year, it would have been much better. But that said, if we look at how this war is going, I would expect Russia to go plus one this year, right? I would have expected that to happen. And like next year, Russia could easily be plus two. Yeah. Right. If he just if you if this turn happened, but Austria just holds for a turn, Russia could easily take Berlin and Munich, meaning. Austria would need to stab too much to prevent the builds from Russia. So I think this is again. I think this is unfortunate that Russia is able to disband Belgium. But I think if you were going to make the stab, if you decided you need to do it from a strategic perspective, then this is what you got to do. Yep. All right. Well, uh, and Italy is now in the Irish Sea in the Atlantic Ocean. They're getting their northern position here. Um, important to note with Italy here, they did abandon their guaranteed shot at holding their homeland by going to Nice to North Africa. Um, the, so they clearly crazy. like <laughs> absolutely crazy. It it worked Why? out. It was. Uh, I mean, clearly yeah. they they suspected that the Austrian was going to turn around. Um, yeah, but like, even still, why risk it? It's just, you have the guaranteed line to keep yourself safe, and he's just like, nah, dude, I'm gonna risk it all to get Tunis to North Africa a turn sooner. <laughs> Hell yes. Well, it did I work mean, out. He got Tunis to North Africa a turn sooner. So clearly it's the right play. <laughs> it worked out uh, great. Yeah. Um, so let's go to the winter here. Uh, let's see what these yeah. Russian builds are gonna be. We've got Army Probably Warsaw or Army, Army Warsaw, Moscow. Moscow right? Yep. <laughs> Just like, this... good luck, Austria. Austria is... the last time you went to war with a six-army Russia? <laughs> a few years ago, I think. But <laughs> yes. Um, so this... Yeah, the, uh, Austria is going to have trouble making progress here. They have successfully managed to separate these German armies, uh, these Russian armies, so they can get Bulgaria back, but they can't really push into Turkey again. Uh, especially if Sevastopol just support. Sevastopol can just go down into Armenia and then <laughs> you've got the same situation again. Um, but yes, yep. uh, no other builds on this board. So shall we just move ahead to the spring? Let's do it. Okay, last year we're going to be covering in this episode spring 1950. Um, and... We see a convoy back to Smyrna uh, from the Russian. It's an interesting approach. Yeah, whatever, man. It works. <laughs> yeah, uh, Russia has decided, yes, he can't hold Bulgaria, so he's just going to hold uh, Turkey, which is absolutely reasonable in this position. Turkey is a nice defensible location to protect. Um, and he does manage to get Romania back anyway because the Austrian dedicates everything to taking Galicia from Budapest. Uh, okay. Yeah, that feels like it would have been better from Vienna. Um, yes. Yes, it does. Yep. <laughs> Especially with this Russian unit in Romania now. Um, yeah, um, that, having Budapest vacant feels terrible now because Romania is guaranteed not getting retaken. Or is if you take in from uh, Vienna, then Galicia cuts Ukraine, and then Budapest, Serbia, Bulgaria all work together on Romania. And, like, Russia probably taps Bulgaria, but 
whatever. Yep. Yeah, uh, and, well, Italy is now on the Austrian side, which is a plus for Austria. Um, they're also on the German side in the north, so everyone is working together against the Russian here. Uh, that, yeah. And Germany makes some progress, uh, although their back SCs are still at the mercy of the Italian. Well, only the yeah, only best. The Russian pulled away from Prussia, that backed out of Kiel, um moved to North Atlantic Ocean, which I assume is more anti-Italian than anything else. Yes. Try to keep Italy bottled up over there. And, like, tried to move to the English Channel. Presumably was asking for German support. Just like, hey, you want to support me in the English Channel? It's fine. Um, but, like, I, I don't expect Germany to let Italy take a bunch of centers, right? Italy's only got three fleets on the west. I would more expect, honestly, Germany to start using Burgundy now Picardy to mess with Iberia. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the... Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, Italy is in it. So this could very easily turn back into a Russia-Germany alliance again. <laughs> from this point. Yeah. Um, which... Looks like that's what Russia's playing for. Would be an interesting situation. Uh, Germany loses Brest, but can't really lose much else because... They're, you know, Italy can only threaten the coastal centers, and uh, all of Germany's got three units in the UK, which is a lot. Um, okay, I have a question. Has anyone taken Moscow this game? Yes, the Germans took it right at the start um, and sat in it for a bit. Is uh, there a center on this board that has not changed hands? Uh, oh, that's an interesting question as well. I feel I'm like sure the, the answer is no. I think oh, I was going to say I think the Italian census haven't been taken, but that's not true because the Italian ended up on one SC in Trieste at one point. Yes. Um, the I believe the French took all of them, and I think uh, Austria ended up in Venice at some point. Yeah. And France took Rome and Naples. Austria's taken Munich and Berlin before, so they've... Well, yes. I mean, Berlin's definitely changed hands, but Munich's changed hands. We've seen Kiel go. Um, well, if Warsaw and Moscow have been taken by the German, I, I'm sure that Turkey took Sevastopol at some point. Turkey early did. In the year. Uh, and I think Austria took Warsaw as well. Um, the Budapest and Vienna have probably both been taken. Uh, I know Vienna has been taken by the German at Wasn't one Austria down to like one center in Venice at some point? Something like that, yes. Uh, so, so... I think yeah. that's all of them. That, that feels I mean, like... Every, is <laughs> every center funny. has changed hands on this board. Uh, it will be in interesting to do a heat map of how often they change, but that's something that maybe should wait until the end of the game. Um, yeah. But so, even up until now, that'd be funny to track. Yep. Um, I would expect, like, Belgium and, like, Bulgaria. Maybe yes. Romania. Top, I think top ones. in my initial Reddit post, I did some kind of comparison of what got taken the most, and I think Romania was definitely up there just because it was flipping between the Russian and the Austrian so often. Um, yeah, so many tactical battles where these two change hands. Yeah. the uh, It will be interesting to see which uh, supply center was owned by the most number of countries as well. Um, it's probably going to be somewhere in the northwest, uh, you would think. Um, yeah, I mean, once Italy takes, like, London or something. Yeah. Has Russia ever owned London? I don't know. I don't think so, but maybe uh, Edinburgh, because that's definitely been French, English, German, and Russian, right? Um, yeah. So if Italy can get there. Italy's going to get to Edinburgh. Yeah, I don't know if Italy's even going to get into the UK. This uh, that Having two German armies there just feels like too much of a blockade. Um, yeah, it's going to make it tough. Okay, uh, so is there much else to talk about here? Or shall we just move on? Um, let's see it. Let, okay, let's go ahead to fall 1950, see if this turns into... Yeah, okay, so Germany is now on the Russian side, so it is Russia, Germany versus Austria, Italy. Um, and in the north, I mean, Italy was only focused on that Russian fleet up there in North Atlantic Ocean. 
uh, backing else of English Channel, probably to try and get German favour again, but Germany's still going for it uh, anyway. Covering Brest, um, going to Burgundy. Italy's holdings in Iberia might be under threat here, especially considering they went back to Tuscany. Yeah, I agree. This is not not good news bears for for Italy in the West. But it is also bad news bears for Russia. I believe that that's an Austrian army in Constantinople now. That is, and I think that's the first time something non-Russian has been in Turkey for a long, long time. Maybe since Turkey got knocked out of it in the first place. Yeah, since Turkey was there. Yeah. Wow. Um, and one one army getting into Turkey can break Turkey. Uh. And when it's when it's combined with a fleet in Eastern Med and Aegean with no fleet in Black Sea to support it, it totally could. And it's happened to work out so that Austria didn't backfill Bulgaria. Um, and so Austria is not actually building Right, because they lost Romania, gained Constantinople. But we do have the Italian army ready to get into Turkey as well, going down to Apulia and going for this 1950 Lepanto, <laughs> potentially. Yeah. And Aegean can support Hold Khan, which keeps this fleet in Smyrna away from the Black Sea, nice and safe in a terrible spot for it. Yep. And Armenia needs to cover Syria, and then if Ankara covers Smyrna, then there's a guess that Bulgaria could use against them. Man, this is a fun tactical battle down here. It there's is. There's a lot going on. I... And really, if Austria had an army in Budapest last turn, this is a completely different world. Yep. Uh, they could have covered Serbia and gone and backfilled Bulgaria. They could have, like, forced Romania in this case. Um, there's a lot of, they had a lot more options than this. It should be noted though, uh, Austria does have a big upside in this, in that the German aggression seems to be purely directed at Italy. They're not helping Russia, um, on this side. So, it is just a pure battle between, um, Austria, Italy, and Russia down here. Um, which seems like Austria, Italy have yep. the upper hand, even if, if they don't go up a center here, uh. I agree. There, that fleet in a gin being stuck in Smyrna now is very awkward for Russia. They, he would love for that fleet to be in Black Sea instead. He yep. would love. He would like disband a couple units to teleport that fleet. I'm sure. Unfortunately, that's not something you can do in the rules of diplomacy for yeah, Russia. Yeah, no those sacrificial teleports. Yep. In, in this way, there are sacrificial teleports, but not. I bet he's wishing he built fleets of Asabol when I <laughs> when he built fleets Saint Petersburg North Coast now. Although that was a while ago, so that was a um, while ago. It's hard to hard to say, but yeah, he really, 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 really wants a fleet in the Black Sea. Yep. Uh, so um, other things to mention. I mean, this is the last phase we're going to cover in this episode. How do you see this playing out going forward? Well, Germany's going to press against Italy in the west. And Italy's not going to be able to hold against Germany. But Germany wants to see Russia lose centers in the south. So I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work. Because if I'm Italy, right, I could see pulling back Ionian into Turanian Sea in the Western Med, right? But then you've lost that fleet against Russia. And then you're not going to go for the Lepanto anymore. And then you're going to have to tell Germany. Look, because you're pressuring me, I'm going to have to hold at the stalemate line to stop you from getting into the med, because Italy, under no circumstance, can Italy let anyone else into the med. Right? Yep. That's how Italy gets eliminated from this game. So, Italy can't afford that. And then it's going to say, yeah, but now we can't hurt Russia. So, Germany, you got to back off and let us go to war with Russia. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this is absolutely true Italy's situation is looking very bad here um, especially because they can't really hold any of these Iberian centers right now there's too much fleet pressure there's too much army pressure and they just moved one of their defending units to a useless location in Tuscany um, yeah people to Tuscany is a really really awkward move like 
it just straight yeah. up loses them more so <laughs> um yeah so well, there's maybe an argument right like if mid-atlantic ocean gets into spain south coast while tuscany makes it back to piedmont then germany needs to get belgium into burgundy and that's going to support hold marseille yeah yeah, I think Belgium has to go to Burgundy here, unless the, he's concerned about the Russian, um, which is reasonable. Oh, he's not concerned about the Russian. <laughs> I mean, there is some, if Germany makes too much progress against Italy, I think there is some possibility that Russian stabs, but that's not right now. I mean, is Germany building two? Uh, are they? Did they gain? Well, they gained one. Kiel. Um, yeah, aren't they playing down one? Oh, they probably are, because they were... Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And yes, so then they have nothing to worry about. <laughs> nothing at all. Um, yeah, right. Right, so, well, let's go ahead and move into the builds with that in mind. Russia took off North Atlantic Ocean here. That's something important to note. So they can build uh, Army Moscow, is probably going to be, um, just to help defend against the Austrian, although it's not the well, most lost, useful. Yeah, either. right, so they're not building. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that makes more sense. Um, so they just chose which unit to disband in the retreat phase instead of in the. Uh... Just tell Germany, hey, let's be friends, right? Or you need to build a fleet because we're pushing the north or something, right? But just making sure people know, I'm committed to the south, not the north. Yep. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and see what gets built here. Um, fleet Berlin, Army Munich, Fleet Berlin, usually anti-Russian. I think in this case, probably not. Um, it's just going to funnel through into Kiel. Uh, yeah. And that's those are the only builds on the board. Um, anything you want to add about them? I mean, just the final supply center count. Russia's at 11, Italy, Germany's at 10, Italy's at 7, Austria's at 6. Okay, where does that put them on our power rankings? Well, I think Germany's still ahead of Italy. Uh, do you think that Germany edges ahead of Russia, given the Russian situation in the south here? Nope. Nope? Do you want to nope. expand on that? Nope. <laughs> um, but I will anyways. So basically, Turkey is still going to be a tough nut for Russia to break. Or for, um, for... for Russia can hold on to Turkey for a long time. Yes. Right. That is still going to be awkward, even if Italy commits to try and go to go for this Lepanto. It's still a guess each turn. And that's just the southern tip. Because in the north, right, it, it, it explicitly loca uh, uh, localized down here in this Turkey Balkans war. Because down here, we've got. Um, Russia can go for Galicia and can take Galicia this turn, right? And yep. Galicia is the most important territory in this war between Russia and Austria. So, that's a good position down there. In the north, now that Germany and Italy are at war with each other, Russia's fleets in the north, Norway and Sweden, and Army Denmark are both going to be free to start pushing out again, right? Russia is probably safe up there, and is only at risk in the south, and is probably fine. Germany is probably more likely to gain a single build, right, by gaining Marseille, but I think it's unlikely Germany gets more than Marseille. I think Italy's going to pull back hard to defend Portugal, Spain, and get into um, get into Western Med, go fully on North Africa. That makes sense. Um, all right, so then our rankings here. Let me uh, just cut to that. There we go. Uh, we've actually swapped over Italy and Germany since last time, but the rest remains the same. Uh, Austria, despite getting into Constantinople, doesn't really have a good enough position to be uh, in contention right now. They're in fourth. Dude, Austria is, is in fourth by so far. It's not even close, in my opinion. <laughs> like, Italy's position is just so much more defensible than Austria's, and Germany is just twice as big. Yep. So... It's it's a distant fourth, right? Because okay. Austria, if Italy decides to eliminate Austria, Austria's gone in like a year and a half. Well, I will visualize that by moving Austria a little bit further down. But yes, they are still <laughs> they yeah, are still in fourth. fourth. Yep. It's just like hope. Thankfully for Austria, Italy can't really make that commitment yet. 
there's just a little bit too much pressure. But if Germany is just like, you know what, Italy, fine, let's make peace in the West. You're you're okay. I'll leave you Mid Atlantic Ocean and Marseille and stuff. Then Italy feels free to just make a stab. Then that'd be crazy. Yeah. It, could, it could absolutely destroy Austria. For sure. Now, again, Italy would need to make sure that they can hold the line without Austria, right? Because that would be pretty scary. If they look like they're going to cut Austria, then Austria tries to throw to Russia, and then Russia solos. So. Yep. Uh, Italy, like, not being as desperate as the other players for a solo here could make a big difference. Um, we'll... So, yes, but yes, uh, Austria is in last place on our power rankings. Then we have Italy, who looks like they're in a pretty bad situation in the West, but not a terrible one. Um, we have Germany in second, um, at peace with their with the neighbor most likely to attack them and, and pretty well defended right now and able to make some immediate gains with Marseille. Um, and then we have Russia up top, who looks like they're in a, a bad situation in the south, but it's defensible and they have the most influence on the board right now. Uh, so, that is where we're going to leave it for this episode, Winter 1950. We are not quite halfway through this game, but we are halfway through these episodes because the last one's going to be a bumper edition where we do 14 years at once. I hope you're ready for that, Ezio. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Won't be for a little while yet, though. We've still got a, a whole bunch of episodes to go through before that. I hope you guys are enjoying, and once again, please go ahead and check out that comment on the last video that explains uh, where all these units have gone in honor of that poor fleet that died in the Gulf of Leon um, after exploring the entire board. May it rest in peace. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. <laughs>